Welcome to the Captain's Run with the great Cameron Smith. Call 1300 01 1170 or text 0457 736 736. And also, welcome. We are here for Chemist Warehouse, heading to Chemist Warehouse for great savings every day. Make sure to subscribe to the Captain's Run on all good apps that uh, deliver podcasts to your phone. Uh, and also, give us a follow at SEN League on Instagram and TikTok at Captain's Run NRL on Twitter. The great Smithers. How you been, brother? Kempi, going good, mate. Uh, another great round of footy, of course. Um, one week closer to State of Origin as well. Not far away yeah. now. We're only, what, five days away from both teams being named. Wow. So pretty keen to see what our listeners think about you know, possible lineups, maybe, for both the Blues and the Maroons for Game 1 in Adelaide, of course. Um, coaches being sacked. Coaches re-signing. It's all happening. It is all happening. i tell you what else is happening as well. Yes. Last week, uh, we had a beautiful view. Mm. No offence, Tommy, but the view is nowhere near as good. <laughs> just got to say it. I just Come on, say Tom. It. Tom. Tom. Work on it. Got to work on that. <laughs> what, what's happening with schnitz, Tommy? Anything? Something? <laughs> oh, wow. Well, once again, we are broken hearted to start oh. the show. But let's get into the huge news over the last few days. St. George, St. George Illawarra Dragons that sack Anthony Griffin. Mm. Dragons confirmed yesterday that club has decided to part ways with Anthony Griffin. Griffin. Griffin was off contract at the end of this season and was told he would have to reapply for his job in 24. Since he joined the club in 2021, the Dragons have won 22 matches from 58 at a winning rate of 38%. First of all, Smithy, thoughts on the whole situation? Well, this has just been bumbling along all season, hasn't it, Campy? I think we've we've mentioned this, sort of, or spoken about this topic on most of our shows throughout the year. I personally thought that um, Anthony Griffin would have seen the year out uh, before they made some decisions on, on 2024. By by everything we're seeing now, and, and they're talking about, you know, he can reapply. Like, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think they're going to... If he reapplies, I don't think, you know, he'll be reappointed. In fairness, I don't think he, he will reapply after being sacked sort of halfway through 2023. Uh, but a bit going on. So I guess now, at least at least for the club, the fans, and particularly the players, it's now done. Mm. So instead of this this unknown, they were sort of living week by week or result by result mm. each game that they played, whether Hook was going to be around for you know the, the, the following game. At least now they know, okay, the decision's been made. Anthony Griffin has now moved on. They have interim coach Ryan Carr taking care of them, and he's made some big changes. He's made changes straight up. He's put Lomax and Jacob Little back in the footy side, who haven't played over the last, what, fortnight for the Dragons. So he's made changes straight up. Um, at least now they can get on with the rest of this season and, and concentrate on trying to finish as strong strongly as they can. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a double-edged sword because I do... I guess, feel... I understand the timing of it in regards to... It probably was time to part ways. Uh, I, you know, I think it was just going to get worse and worse for the Dragons. Mm. But in Hook's defence, and I'm... I, as I said, I'm of the mind there's a lot of things that Hook's decisions he made in regards to game plans or selections that I personally disagreed with. But in Hook's defence, I do think he's being handled really poorly here. You know, mm. to roll into training at 8 o'clock in the morning <laughs> to get told that, oh, by the way, you're sacked. Um, we're parting ways. <laughs> Then to send the players out there at 8.30 to do media and just uh, the whole thing was handled a bit strangely in my opinion. I yeah. think that why not get in there earlier or have a board meeting later at night or delay it a day if you have to. Yeah. I just think that it is a reflection of you can blame, you can put blame on Hook, no mm. denying that. Yes. You can do that. But I do think that not only is this an example of how poorly the club is being run right now, mm. um, there has to be blame put on the club as well for being in this situation. Like, if you wanted to say Hook's the only reason the Dragons are struggling, just look at how they handled even the sucking of Hook yeah. to see how they're leading this club. And as you know, Smithy, winning starts in the front office. Yeah. Well, you'd think you'd think that that would have been done differently. Hey, like instead of bringing him into training, like the the media knew that they, they were sniffing around. There was cameras everywhere at the front. There, yeah, you know, there was a little sniff the, the evening before. I think there was. There was mention that it was possibly happening that following day. Mm. Why? Why did they not meet somewhere that night and inform Anthony Griffin that he was his services were no longer needed? And then someone from possibly I don't know. Let's just toss up CEO Ryan Webb. Why would he not then front the media? 
yep. as the head of the club, the the, the boss of, of the organization to say, listen, this is this is the decision we've made as a, as an organization. Um, you know, we've decided that it's it's time to move forward without Anthony Griffin as the coach. Um, we've got an interim coach taking care of the team for the re- for remainder of this season. And as you are aware, um, you know, we've um, we'll, we'll be interviewing you know, potential candidates for the job moving forward. I, I don't understand how you know you you sort of you, you're hanging the coach you've just sacked out to dry. He's got to drive past a a, a scrum of media cameras, um, and then you just roll your players out to, to to answer questions that really, you know, it's it's not, it's not their job to do that. It's their job to go and play football and try and get results. Yeah, mate. Like Hooks, are, he's a big boy, and he he understands the beast. He understands how it all works. He understands the brutal nature of being a head coach. Mm. But I just didn't think there was much humanity in essentially the leak getting out so the media's all there waiting and this poor bloke has to walk out of the the change rooms for essentially his last time and get photographed driving out. It's like, mm. yeah, I'm all for strong decisions, but I think strong decisions with empathy can go a long way to sending good messages to the rest of the club. And I, I, I don't know, I just thought that it wasn't handled the best. Even though I agree it probably, it, not probably, I agree it was time to part ways. Yep. I just don't think it was handled the best. Now, in regards to uh, the CEO, he actually had some things to say yesterday with uh, the great Fletch. Ryan, do any of the current players in the top 30 have a clause in their contract that if Anthony Griffin is let go, that they they can get out of their contract? No, 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 we've got no clauses, anything like that one. Okay. Yeah, I can see where the, the question's coming from. I think at the at the root of it, Ben wants success. He yeah. wants to win. Um, he's you know, not coming to the point in. He's got a few years left in him, but you know, he wants success. So he he doesn't want to have to spend a lot of time you know, building something back up. Are you worried that Ben Hunt might want to get out of his Dragons contract? No, no. no. Okay. I, I don't think... Um, no, in short, no. There it is. Mm. Uh, it's an in- interesting situation. I mean, Smithy, I, I mean, I played a bit of with uh, Dozer, the great Dozer, when he was coming through, but obviously yep. you've had a lot to do with him in Origin Camp. Yep. Where, where do you reckon this sits? Do you think Dozer's the kind of guy that would would leave a contract early? No, oh, I don't think so. It doesn't strike me as the type of person that would break a contract, but you just you don't know the situation down there at the moment can be really like mm. it's you know we, it's easy for us to comment and and form opinions from where we are looking from afar, but you know without knowing exactly what's going on down there and and you know we just spoke about how we felt as though you know the treatment for Anthony Griffin could have been handled a lot differently. So you can only sort of imagine the way Ben Hunt's feeling as the skipper of the club, a guy that was fairly close to, to Hook. Um, but at the end of the day, as you know, the CEO just spoke about, you know, Benny Hunt's got a contract there. He's, he's signed until the end of 25, I think it is. So it's another couple of seasons plus the remainder of this one. Um, look, I'd like to think that he, he would see that out. But as we... We know, particularly with the with the modern day game and, and the modern contract, if if players want out, they they can break it quite easily. It's very different to the back in the day where you know you, you had to see your contract out, and we're, we're seeing players break contract all the time every season. But uh, I I I cannot I can't see him doing it, mate. Particularly if particularly you know if they appoint someone that you know is is high quality coach. Um, and and he feels as though he can they can make a positive difference to the dragons and move forward. So, um, oh, I don't see him. I don't see him moving at all. I think the Ben Hunt situation. It's got a lot about it because there could even be, and this is super speculation. There's no nothing to suggest is the case. But there's a world where do the dragons say, you know what, we're in a complete rebuild, mm-hmm. Benny. We understand you don't want to re- rebuild everything because by halfway time you get through it, your contract's up, and you may or may not be retiring. I, I think there's potential where they could mutually, because that's a big part of their cap. Yes. And they could go, all right, you know, Amon Sullivan, are our future. Yep. Let's go out in the market and get potentially more future and build towards the next five years, similarish to what the Bulldogs have done. Yep. Uh, in regards to their roster, similar to what Penrith done, mm-hmm. you know Broncos, we're seeing a bit of the the fruits of a few years ago. Players probably playing a year or two early. Yep. So I do wonder whether the Dragons 
consider that possibility of going, is there a mutual way to part where we just build towards a future? Well, you know what, mate? Like that, that, that might, the, the new coach, the, the, the new coach that they appoint may play a huge part in that. Mm. So whoever, whoever they get, and there's a few, there's some, let's just toss up some possible names for, um, the replacement down there. So obviously Jason Rolls has been thrown around. His name has been um, strongly connected with the Dragons. Uh, ben Hornby, of course, former Dragons player. Shane Flanagan, uh, Des Hasler, uh, Michael Checker as well, and Dean Young, another former Dragons uh, player, one of, one of the club legends actually um, at the Dragons. So depending on, on who they go for, like they may have a big say in the future of or, or, or be, where Ben Hunt is. Like, particularly if he, he's thinking, oh, look, I, I don't want to go through a complete rebuild. Um, the coach may say, yeah, no worries, mate. Completely understand. If, if you don't want to be here, then that's fine. Um, we can come to some sort of agreement where, you know, you move on. Or does the new coach go, no, Benny, I'm going to build, I'm going to build this team around you. I, I need you moving forward. And I, and I think we can, we can be, ultra competitive with you still playing in the number seven jersey or mm. wherever it wherever it may be. Mm. Um he may be, you know, central to that new coach's plans moving forward. So yeah, I, I don't think they'll jump the gun. I really don't think they'll jump the gun unless Ben Hunt is is that unhappy with the decision. Um and and he doesn't really have too much concern or care about who's coming in as new coach and he just wants out of there. I, I think they'll just wait and see for you know, the plans of the new coach. Because they're in this really, I guess, precarious position where you've got Sullivan, a budding seven that wants game time. You've got a moan, another half that wants game time. And so you it's going to be a tough call of, you know, do we put Ben Hunt in the known role and give these guys, you know, the future or, or do we let one of them go and allow them to, you know, explore their careers elsewhere? Mm. It's, it's, a, it's a really tough position their roster balance is in at the moment. Yes, yeah, no, I agree. I agree. They've um, it's it's hard to juggle all of those players at the moment, and to be able to give them all game time without mm. someone missing out somewhere. Mm. Um, so you know, as, do they go down that line of of complete restructure of their of their best seventeen, and they go youth and mm. go for long term building towards a premiership, or does Ben Hunt stay a part of their plans? Look, if I'm <laughs> I'm being completely honest here, and I've said this over the last few weeks, if he's not a part of this lineup, this Dragons lineup this year, like they get beat by 40 nearly every game. Yeah. So he's a huge part of, of their team and, and the most important player in their side. So you'd be mad to leave him out. Mm. But, you know, you just don't know. You just don't know moving forward with who they appoint and, and, and what their thoughts are. Uh, how long... Uh, get Pick your brain here, Cabby. How long do they wait until they appoint... I know you don't want to rush these things, but you don't want to be at the end of this season and still not have an answer. You want to, you want to make a decision relative, like sooner rather than later, don't you? Yeah, well, I think the Craig Bellamy coming out publicly and saying he's staying another year at the Storm has given them more breathing room. I think that if <laughs> Bellamy had have you know delayed longer, it would yeah. have been a quite stressful situation for them. Yeah, I, I think you try to get it done. Not you know, as you said, you don't want to rush it. But you want to get in the market ASAP. And you want to start sitting down players and go, mm. the new coach sitting down players and go, you are a part of my plans, you aren't a part of my plans, yes. and get the salary cap back into sh- shape. So I would honestly probably say the sooner the better. I just got a text here. Mm. Can we give any insight into likely replacement Jason Rolls? Have you had anything to do with Rollsy? Yeah, well, I was actually... I, I played with Rollsy um, at the mm. Melbourne Storm. Uh, when he when he come down there, this is going back uh, quite some time, about a decade ago now. So, um, yeah, former teammate. And also he was an assistant coach there for quite some time. And, and um, yeah, look, he, he's fantastic um, at his job. I, you know, having worked under Craig Bellamy for numerous years, did a little bit of work with Eddie Jones as well with the English rugby side. Um, so learned a little bit, um, of, you know, different ways to, to do things with prepara- as far as preparation and, and training and, and all these different types of things. Um, and now, obviously, at the at the Roosters under Trent Robinson, uh, you know he's learned from you know some quality coaches, quality senior coaches who have been doing it from a long time, and I think he's ready to go. I I think he's you know he's been 
wait well not waiting but you know I think he's been waiting patiently for an opportunity to, to go somewhere whether whether you know that that Melbourne job was his priority or not I, I'm not too sure to be honest but the, I guess the Dragons role now that's that's popped up and, and his name being attached with it quite strongly I can understand why he lives in the, he lives in the area he's from the area he's he's a former Dragons player so he knows he knows the organization he knows the footy club he knows what they're about he knows the community as well um, so he's got you know very close ties to to that football organization um, and I think he would go in there with some you know some pretty strong plans for the club moving forward yeah and I will say I know Dragons fans it feels a bit doom and gloom right now but it wouldn't take much to get a lot of because the, the Red V is so historical in rugby league and mm. I know every club feels like they are but I mean the Red V especially it is you know, it's got such a history in rugby league. It wouldn't take that much to get them back on the path of hype and hope yeah. and all of all that, you know, half a season or some recruitment. Look at the Bulldogs. Like, yep. for example, Bulldogs are a perfect example. They're sitting essentially at the bottom of the ladder, yet there's still hope and excitement because there's plans in place. There's young guys coming through. And I think the Dragons, they're not far off that as well. It's just a matter of finding the right people in the right places. Yeah. And, and mate, we've seen a lot of, like a handful of the teams that struggled, say in in twenty one and twenty two, that they're they're slowly making changes now, mm. and, and and improvements, and and really from a fan's point of view, that's all you want to see. Yeah, you just want to see your team improving, you know, each week or each month or year on year. Like, look at the Broncos now. Mm. Like, it, talk about doom and glo- doom and gloom. Oh, like, they've come from the very very bottom where they picked up a wooden spoon. Last year, they, they were going strongly. They were going along nicely, fell off a cliff, and now sitting, well, they were top of the ladder until last week. Mm. You know, and, and look at the excitement around that footy club at the moment. So things can change quickly. You just need to be smart with the way you, you go about building your roster and have the right person in charge at the top to get the very, very best out of the players. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. Let's have a quick injury wrap from round 11. Thanks to Victor School and Sports Club Supplies. Visit victorsports.com.au. What well, do you got, Smitty? We've got a few again, Campy, this week. Unfortunately, Josh Alloye, dislocated shoulder. We've seen him uh, attempt that tackle, and he just fell awkwardly on the ground. So he's going to be gone for about up to six weeks. Um, Kalmatur Lungi, he got a facial fracture, so not great news uh, for the Manly Seagulls. He's out for six. Aaron Woods as well. Fractured thumb. Woodsy. Four to six. She's so down on some troops. Wow. Cam McInnes. Broken hand. Four weeks. Joey Manu. Well, he, he sort of... he It looked awkward when he went over on his yeah. ankle um, last Friday night up there in Penrith. But uh, they said it's a moderate ankle ligament damage. So two to three weeks. Um, Those can like... They can really hurt at the time. And yes. you think oh, my God, I'm done forever here. And yeah. they heal quite quickly. Yeah, and they, and they blow up and they look really – they look quite bad. Mm. Um, they swell up real quick and they're quite painful, as you said, mate. But, yeah, they they come good pretty quick. So Tommy, the producer, he's got his fingers crossed, so hoping Joey's back soon. Uh, Adam Reynolds, one week. Is is he definitely out this week? Yeah, he got ruled I, out. Ruled out, yeah, because yeah. they were monitoring him early. Uh, so yep. – out, Adam Reynolds, big out for the Bronx. Sean Lane, this is a big one for Parramatta. Oh. Only been back a few matches. He's done his hammy. Oh. Six to eight, so, yeah, bad news to worse for and Sean Lane. A big fellow like that, you know, with a hamstring, they, oh, yep. man, they can get bloody... They hang around for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Raiders hooker, Zach Wolford, um, he will be out with concussion, Um as part of that uh, that team that's flying at the moment. Five in a row, the Raiders. How good. Um, but Zach Wolford, concussion out of last weekend. Victor School and Sports Club Supply, supplying school and sports throughout Australia. Visit victorsports.com.au. Uh, let's get into your mate, Bellamy. It was supposed to be the next segment, but I thought we'd just quickly touch on this segment. <laughs> the great bellyache has... Yes. Uh, the Houdini of contract negotiations, they've called him. Yep has once again recommitted to coaching next year. Uh, I, for one, personally never thought he was not coaching next year. I, <laughs> I just can't see it. He loves it, the yeah. old fellow. He loves it. Yeah. 
What do you reckon, Smithy? Oh, mate, he done he done his best, didn't he, to uh, oh, make mate. people think otherwise. And yeah. and I, and to be honest, as each week went by without an announcement from Craig, I, I thought, well, this is going to be it. Like he's done, mm. he's done. Mm. And after seeing him, after a, a, a couple of their matches this year, and I must say they were after a couple of ordinary losses by the team when they got beat by Titans, and I think it was when they were beaten convincingly by the Rabbitohs in Magic Round. He just looked a little bit perplexed and. Um, sort of lack that usual energy you see from Craig when he when he's at the footy, um, and that's when I, I sort of went away thinking to myself, "Oh, look, I, I think he's this is it." Not that he's not that he was sort of given up on on the team or his role or thinking that they weren't a chance this year. Just just he just didn't see himself, and I thought, well, you know, the, the decision must be coming or it's looming that he's going to announce that he's going to be finishing up. But the big fella. He uh, well, what did he say? He I, and I find this really hard to believe. He said that Cameron Munster convinced him to stay. That's 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 got to be a G up. If I've oh. ever heard one, Cameron Munster convincing kidding, you to you? continue coaching, please. If there's please. one guy not to take advice from, it's Cameron Munster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, we actually got a, we got a text here, Smitty. Yeah, okay. Boys at Penrith Park last Friday, there was a def- definite captain's run listener sitting behind me. When Yo put the wobbly cross kick in, a gentleman behind me yelled, Holy schnitz! No way! <laughs> That's what Willow reckons. Yes. That's what Willow reckons. How good. Holy <laughs> schnitz. Yes. Oh, man. How yes. good would it be to be eating some schnitz right now? But we're oh. not. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Anyway. Uh, we're we're going to head to a break. After the break, we're going to push. We're going to talk about which players can push for their origin selection. And we'd be getting a thousand texts about origin. They love it. The people love it. So make sure to stay tuned because there's a few schmokies and we love a bit of smoky tat. Mm-hmm. Welcome back to The Captain's Run. Make sure to give us a follow or subscribe to us on all good podcasting apps, The Captain's Run. Uh, we want to talk about which players can push their case for an origin jumper this weekend. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, people uh, may think that Smithy actually selects the players, but you don't actually select the players, Smithy, do you? No, not at all. No, that's... Uh, for, well, for Queensland, it's, it's Bill Slater, the coach, and then mm-hmm. Darren Lockyer and one of the great... Centers back rowers for Queensland, yes. Gene Miles. That's so the selection the, side. Yeah, just for the the listeners, they may go, oh, well, Smithy said he's a chance, therefore, you know, yep. he, he's getting selected or whatever. Yes. But we've got a few names here. Okay. We'll talk about, let's talk about the Queenslanders first. You've got Reese Walsh, Hamiso uh, Tabawai Fidel, Tabawai Fidel, yep. and uh, Corey Horsburgh. Mm. Which, which three of them do you think, if they play out of their skin this week, Yep. could potentially make the squad. Well, I'll tell you what. Like, let, Let's just talk about the um, middle forward. So, Corey Horsburgh. He, he's playing outstanding at the moment. And and rightly so. It's a, it's a big reason why the Raiders have gone on their five-game winning streak. Um, he, he's playing you know, the best football of his career. There's, there's no doubt about that. He's getting through a lot of work. I'll tell you what he's doing. He's doing a lot of um, sort of work away from the football really well, Kempi. So he's getting on kick chases. He's working around the football. He's working on the inside in defence and going out putting pressure on um, key ball players on the opposition. So things that you don't typically think about when you when you're talking about a big middle forward, right? Mm. And then on top of that, he's making you know, a lot of tackles and he's carrying the ball strongly. So you know, I'm sure his name will be will be spoken about you know thoroughly when it when it comes to selecting those middle forwards. The only thing working against him at the moment is that there's a whole bunch of middle forwards playing really well um, from from the Queensland's from Queensland's point of view. That's the only thing that may work against him. Um, but yeah, you know, when you when you look at those outside backs, we all know Hamaso how strongly he started the season for the Dolphins, um, being one of the form fullbacks of the competition. I think I don't know if he still is, but it, but for the most part of this year, he was leading the competition for tries scored. So. He's pretty. He's been pretty potent in attack. Got a great, you know, combination with a lot of their players in the middle, and Reese Walsh. That yeah, everyone's. He's been on you know the back page of the papers ever since he his first game for the Broncos early this year. Um, he's made a real difference to their attack as well, and I think with Kalen Ponga um, not playing fullback and and really missing the the first um, part of this season um, with some concussion issues. It, it sort of put him in in the box seat to take that that number one spot, but at the same time, I think 
a lot of people are quick to forget about what Caelan Ponga did for Queensland last year. Like he across the series, I would put him in top three or four players for Queensland. Then you think of Game Three. He was Queensland's best player. Mm. He was Queensland's best player in Game Three, and a huge reason as to why, you know, the Maroons were able to to win that that third match, um, that decider in in Brisbane. So there's a really it's I think I think actually I think Billy's meeting with uh, those two guys I mentioned, Darren Lockyer and Gene Miles, this week to have some dis- some further discussions around the team um, and and. Of course, we've got one more game to go where you know, hopefully all players from both states get through um, unscathed. But um, there's some good headaches for the Queensland selectors moving forward. Mm. Yeah, it's a, there's been a bit of chat around, and I'm not sure whether there's you know any substance to it, but around potentially Hamiso getting Dane Gagai's spot. But I think that anyone that's been watching Newcastle, mm. Dane Gagai's been playing some good footy. Yeah. So I was quite surprised uh, at that chat. Is that, uh, I guess, from your perspective, yep. do you do you see Hamiso as a centre, as a winger? What do you see? Well, well, I guess the the benefit of of a player like um, the Hammer is that is his versatility. He can play obviously fullback is his preferred position, but he's played in the centres. He he can play wing if you need him to as well. So he can play those outside all three of those outside back positions. As far as Dane Gagai is concerned. Look, he represented Queensland in um, all three games last last series, and I believe, and I believe that he's in better form right now than what he was at this same time last year. Like he's defending strongly, he's carrying the ball strong. I know the Knights have had an up and down um, year thus far, but Dane Gagai's, I, I think, way in front of where he was last year from a personal form point of view. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I totally agree, and. It, it's just surprising because we all know what Gagai has done on the Origin Arena. Yeah. I, how, I just don't understand how there's even a consideration that he wouldn't get at least yeah. in game one. Well, I, I think we just get at times, you know, people get a little bit excited by youth mm-hmm. and, 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 you know, the exciting way that they play. They play with high energy, high speed, um, with most things that they, they do. But you, you, can't, you cannot underestimate the value of, of experience. Mm. Particularly, particularly when it comes to state of origin, Kempi. Like, you know, I remember back. You know, there was there was a time, there was a period of time there where, you know, when I was still playing Origin, I, I think, yeah, you know, there was calls in the media about the Queensland side. They they nicknamed us Dad's Army, <laughs> just saying we're too old. And New South Wales rolled out all these young up and comers, and they they, as I said, you know, I mentioned they play with high energy and they they look good. They they ran fast. They were powerful. But look who got the job done. It was it was Queensland that that got the job done in the end. So you cannot underestimate the fact that the guys that have been there and understand what it means to play Origin and what it takes to to play Origin football. It's it's so different to NRL your week to week NRL games. Mm. And and we've seen we've seen players that absolutely you know blitz the NRL. Blitz the NRL, like the premiership competition. But then when they're asked to step up and play in a sky blue, and sometimes, you know, in the Maroon jersey as well, they just, they cannot, they, they struggle to make that step up. Mm. Dan Galgo is certainly a player that doesn't have that issue. Now onto the New South Wales side of things. Campbell Graham, Hudson Young, Nico Hines, Stephen Crichton. I'd also throw in Olakawatu. Who out of there mm. do you think, if they have a really big game, could nab their way a, nab a blues jersey? Well, I think Campbell Graham will get picked. I'll just start there. I don't know what your thoughts are there on, on Campbell Graham, but I, I think you know you cannot ignore the form that he's in at the moment with the Rabbitohs, um, particularly with, with Tommy Turbo. Now, you know people are talking about Tommy and comparing him to last year and the stats and whatnot, but anyone that, that <laughs> watches the game closely, surely they've seen you know the way Tommy's playing. He doesn't... He looks like he's lacks speed. So I, I believe that I believe that he won't play. I, I believe Campbell Graham will be picked in the centres. As far as you know, guys like Hudson Young, Nico Hines in particular, Hudson Young I think will will certainly fit. You know that that team that 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 role, whether he starts or he comes off the bench, I'm not too sure. But he's that type of player that really suits State of Origin. Mm. Um, and Nico Hines, well, oh, I don't know. Like, what do you, <laughs> where do you put him? What do you say? I. I firmly believe it'll be Luai and Cleary. Mm. 
I know there's you know there's a lot of people saying you can't leave Nico Hines out like you know he, he won the Dally M last year. Look what he's doing with the Sharks this year. Well, you know that's great, and it's and it's not and and it's great. It's easy to say yeah, just pick all the best players, mm. but surely combination means something when it comes to you know a team selection like State of Origin. And mm. I'm and I talk about the combination that that Luai and Cleary have at club level. Yeah, Luai, Cleary, Yo, Appy if he gets selected. Yeah, Stephen Crichton if they put him on one center with To'o, and then they go Latrell, Campbell, Graham on the wing. Um, it's yeah. Uh, it's so hard to not put Nico in the side because of how incredibly good he is. Mm. But I think that people are forgetting. So Luai has played two Origins. Obviously, the one where you know Mar- Maroon's won. Yeah. But he was also in his debut Origin series part of a record defeating yep. New South Wales squad. Yes. And so it, t- this idea that he just hasn't delivered at all in Origin, it's it's actually not true. It's, he's essentially one for one. Bit quiet last series. The series before he was really really good. He's also the reigning back-to-back six. He also took Samoa to a World Cup grand final. Like His resume is... I understand Nico's got a Dally M, and I'm all for Nick. If Nico gets selected, I mate, what an incredible journey. Yeah, of course. But Luai's got... He's got a fair resume. Like, yeah, he's got some not, form on the board. Yeah, it's not like he's just, oh, yeah, it's, he's only getting picked because he ha- he's just a partner of Cleary. Well, no, yeah. he's got some individual stuff too. Yeah. And and you know what, can't be like... If that's a if that's part of the reason he does get picked because of his combination with Cleary, then so be it. Yeah. Like what what's the issue there? Like mm. you know what I mean? Say 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 majority of people think Nico Hines is a is a better half overall. Does that does that mean that they'll strike a good combination, Cleary and Hines together? Yeah. Probably not. Mm. Like you're talking about you're talking about a duo that have been playing football together since what, thirteens? So they have a strong understanding of each other's games. And, and when it comes to those big moments, those pressure moments, you know, you'd like to think that that combination will 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 work out in a positive way. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, speaking as a Queenslander, it's it that that's it doesn't concern me at all. Like who they pick. It's it's not a, it's not really it won't be a focus of the Queensland team, you know, worrying about who their halves partners are. It's about you know the Queenslanders and, and preparing themselves properly. But you know my opinion is that I, I feel as though they'll stick with Luai at six. Mm. I'm not sure whether Nico will get a spot on the bench or whether he goes into the squad. Um, it just depends on the makeup of their side and I guess what they think they need off the mm. bench. Now we've got a text here, but I was going to bring it up anyway. But uh, what about Cody Walker? Is he the forgotten man in this whole discussion? He is playing incredible. Yeah, Rabbitohs are the form side. Yeah, I don't. I feel like he got a lot of unfair blame when he did play Origin. I mm. didn't think he was actually that bad. Because uh, he got hooked, didn't he? Yeah, he got hooked. Mid-game. And, and basically, yeah, basically, that was it, pretty much. Mm. What, is Cody Walker the forgotten man here? Well, given his form at, at Clubland, I think, and, and the lack of um, mentions he gets for a possible selection, you could possibly say that, mate. Absolutely. Mm. But... I think given his form over the last month um, especially, I think he deserves to be spoken about. There's no doubt he's got to be in the conversation. If, if you're, if New South Wales or you know people that support New South, New South Wales are uncertain or unconvinced on who your half's partner should be, surely Cody Walker gets a mention. He mm. has to, particularly if particularly if they go with, you know, if they have, let's say, Latrell Mitchell in the centres. Mm-hmm. Again, there's another combination that you can that you can forge together, you know, moving into Origin One. Cookie at Cookie at nine. Cookie nine. You could have Murray starting on an edge with Campbell Graham, Latrell Mitchell. Yep. You could have essentially a whole Rabbitohs edge. Yes. Uh, so yeah, it's I, I agree. Uh, thanks for the text, and we've got plenty more to get through. Uh, that's from Morgan. But yeah, I, I think Cody Walker is forgotten now. Does does that mean that I think he should should get selected? I'm not sure, but he's he definitely should be in the conversation. Who definitely. do you, who do you think will be? What what's what's your thoughts Mate. right now? Who they think? Who you think will? Well, Cleary will be seven. Who's going to go six? All year I've been saying Cleary, Jerome, game one. Yep. With Nico at fourteen yes. two weeks ago, Nico came out and played unbelievable. I mm-hmm. said, you know what? I think I might be leaning towards Nico. Mm-hmm. And then Jerome came back out and played outstanding on the weekend. So I'm going Cleary, Luai, and depending how they want to, you know, play their like hooker rotation. Yep. Hines on the bench. But we're going to head to a break. After the break. We'll uh, plenty more footy to talk about. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. 
Thanks to the SEN app. Download it today for free in the App Store and listen anywhere, anytime. Smithy, best hands thanks to Schnitz. What do we got? Best hands. One point this week. It goes to Brian Kelly for his flick pass. Uh, for Lofi Khan Pereira, scored against the Knights. They were strong in the first half, Titans. Just couldn't finish it off. Yeah, what happened? Story of the season. No. Uh, two points. Latrell Mitchell's no look pass for Campbell Graham to score in, score against the Tigers. Twenty nil, solid. Did what they have mm. to do. I I actually really liked it from the Rabbitohs because like yeah yep. they didn't. I mean we'll get to it, but they didn't blow them off the park. Yeah. But I think your Rabbitohs of yesteryear would start panicking and going, oh my god, we're only beating Tigers six nil. Yep. This Rabbitohs said no, nope, all good. The we're points happy. will come. Yeah, we're they happy. Did. Yeah. Yep, no, I'm happy with that too. Uh, three points, though, goes to Dom Young. Uh, when he got up, he did that huge leap over Carm Pereira to score wow. the opening try against the Titans. Um, performed a little bit of a juggling act too while he was in the air trying to get that ball. But uh, Dom Young, he just, wow, just keeps performing. What a loss he's going to be. Oh, man. I mean, yeah, Tommy's shaking his fist. <laughs> he, he's, he's celebrating. A, uh, mate, that's the only smile you've you've come up know, with, Tom. A whole couple of weeks, mate. Every time oh, we bring the roosters up, he just puts his head yeah. down. He disappears. Yeah, anyway. How good the how good the Penrith Panthers going? Anyway, <laughs> uh, schnitz, bite into golden, delicious, handcrafted schnitzels. Uh, got a few texts here, Smithy. Yes, mate. Um, Walsh has to be number one. Ezra Mam has to be number 14. Ponga with head knocks is a liability. Ben Hunt would, wouldn't be in the right headspace, and Mam deserves his shot. Ryan oh. from Mackay. Wow. Oh, wow. Reckon, wow. Is Ryan a Broncos fan, you reckon? Uh, I think he might be. Yep. I think he might be. Yep. Um, because, yeah, Benny Hunt in origin is honestly, it's godlike. It's beautiful. It's it's the best thing in rugby league, nearly, right yep. now anyway. And you know what? Like, like to be fair, like Reese Walsh, he, he wouldn't be out of place, would he? Like, he's playing... Such good footy, such mm. good footy. But really, it, it's going to come down to what those three men. You know, we mentioned their names before: Slater, uh, Lockyer, and Miles. You know, it depends what they think is is the best for the Maroons in game one, particularly. Caelan Ponga hasn't played a lot of football. Reese Walsh, he's in great form, but just I think KP he just sent a, just a a timely reminder to everyone mm. on the weekend what he's what he's about as a player. So it's going to be a tough one. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. Smithy, we got some text here, mate. Yeah, no, we got a few, Kempy. Um, hey, boys, when Kempy, uh, sorry, when Kempy, when Teddy retires, who will be number one fullback? Would it, would it be Turbo? Would it be Trell? Who would you go with? Ooh, Good question. I mean, Good question. Uh, I mean, to be honest, if, it just depends what you're banking on. Right now, you'd have to say Trell, wouldn't you? Yeah, true. Um, but I think you've got another text here as well. Before yeah, we no, no, real quick one. Just want to wish uh, Mick from Wollongong happy 70th birthday, Kempe. He's a big Melbourne Storm fan. Has been since 98, since the club first joined. Um, mate, have a great birthday down there. Um, hopefully you're around all your friends and family. Couple of froffies. Couple of blokes. Couple of bloke beers. Grab your local. Now on celebrations yep. on special in New South Wales and Queensland. <laughs> Good on you, Mick. Happy 70th, mate. There we go. Happy 70th, mate. We'll see you on the other side. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. We are here for Chemist Warehouse, heading to Chemist Warehouse for great savings every day. We've actually got some callers on the line. We're going uh, Tazzy Toad. The Tazzy Toad. How you going, Tazzy Toad? Yeah, good day, boys. Best time of year, innit? Yes, Best mate. Best time of year. What's happening, Tazzy? <laughs> mate, um, just a quick question, Smithy and uh, Campy. As a Queenslander, when you play for Australia, do you um like I've been to a you know a Test match in Sydney in 2014 and I've watched documentaries about King Wally. Like Sydney Sydney siders give it to Queenslanders even when they're playing for Australia. And my first question is, do you notice it um, when you're out there, you know, playing against the Kiwis and that? And the second question is, um, maybe I'm a bit biased, but I don't think. I don't think Queenslanders do that. Like, I really look forward to seeing Cleary, Mitchell, even Benny Life back in there. I used to hate Benny Life oh. with a passion, but oh. when he wore when he wore the green and gold, I loved him. Yeah, that's a good point you made, and I think probably no no Queenslander um, has felt that any more than the King Wally Lewis when he famously, I think he was mm. famously booed by 
the Sydney crowd when he led the the Kangaroos out to play a test match against New Zealand. I think it was in Sydney. So that's just yeah, you know, incredible. But yeah, you know, I was lucky enough to to play um, some test matches in Sydney, and I got to admit, I, I I don't recall ever you know being booed by you know the locals down there, the New South Welshmen. It was always yep. really good. Yeah, you know, they supported the Kangaroos whether. You were, you were you know, from Queensland or New South Wales or wherever you were from representing the Kangaroos. Yep. It was always a, a fairly um, good reception. Um, but, yeah, I, I could only imagine what it was like, you know, being the captain of Australia, as Wally Lewis was oh. at the time, and leading leading the, the national team out, but then being booed by New South Wales in, in a lot of ways and, and probably in, in all um, aspects of why they booed him was just – it was a backhanded compliment. They disliked him so much because he he actually tormented them that much through state of origin because he was so good for Queensland. Yeah, they they disliked him that much even when they were representing their country. But yeah, no, I I, I you know I I don't I, I think most um, most well all players they sort of they didn't they didn't cop that type of treatment that Wally did. Maybe maybe Gell. Maybe Gell's an exception when he came up and played <laughs> when he played in Queensland. He, he might have got a few jeers from the crowd. <laughs> but I tell you what, he didn't help himself. <laughs> Calling Queenslanders two heads and all that type of stuff. <laughs> he probably got what he deserved, Gell. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. It's funny uh, after the World Cup. Just to hmm. reiterate your point, I've got a couple of mates that obviously New South Welshmen, and they go, "Well, after watching the World Cup, they're like." Far out. It was so good to not hate Munster making big <laughs> plays because he was doing it for Australia. And yeah. so, yeah. It, to your point, it is it is funny how people that you sit in there, they, they kill your team or whatever, you hate them and they get in that yeah. Australian jersey and you go, yes, this is the best. Um, That's it. That's it. Mate, thank you so much, Tazzy Toad. Really appreciate That's it, brother. Thanks, boys. Have a good day. Good on you, you too, mate. There he is, the Tazzy Toad. We've got another caller here, Jackson from the Northern Beaches. Jacko. Jackson, you there, mate. Boys, how we doing? Jacko, good, mate. How are you? Mate, doing, doing well, doing well. Another Queenslander living in Sydney. Oh. A, uh, question about Penrith for you, boys. Yep. So um, after that big season last year and, you know, losing a few key personnel, it looks like they're struggling with form. Are they, you know, confident in a, you know, it's a kind of a deep season, bring it back, or do you think they actually are struggling? What do, you go first, Kempi. What do you reckon, mate? Oh, well, I mean, if you had asked me this seven days ago, I would have said, yeah, they're still struggling to find their combinations and things aren't clicking in a year. But, oh, man, after that Roosters game, that's a scary side. Like, they play that good any time of the year, including in finals footy. You're going to have to be Rabbitohs at their best, Storm at their best, uh, Roosters if they can get everything together at their best. Mm. So to see the fact that they still have that in them, I'm actually quite confident that, yeah, they, they may not be as dominant as yesteryear. They, they may not win every single game or only lose three in the year. But I do think that after seeing the fact that they still have that top, top end of, like, top-tier footy, um, they may be just, I guess, timing their charge till late in the year. What do you reckon, Smithy? Yeah, look, I, I was really impressive on the weekend. It's it's by far their best performance of the year. Um, but i got to say, the, the Roosters were, were extremely poor. They were, and that's. I'm not even trying to have a little dig at our producer Tommy here. The the Roosters were ordinary. I, I like. I can't. I can't put it any other way. Particularly their defence. Like they just. There was players not showing up to get their job done. Mm. You know, Penrith. They were smart. They come with you know a, the tactics of, um, you know, doing drop play like cross plays where they t- change angles and force you know runners back to where the ball came from. Luai all night was left foot, left foot, left foot, challenging the inside defenders to fill the space. And they just weren't showing up, Kempi. Mm. Um, so, you know, the, as, as well as they did play, they didn't really, they weren't, they weren't pressured a whole lot. And I think I may have mentioned um, on the captain's run last week, I just, they're, they're a very different side to what they have been over the last three years, particularly because they've lost key personnel in Coruscant and, um, Kick out, and particularly with Coruscant in the middle, it's a very different dynamic now. Um, with Mitch Kenny playing at nine, and Sonny Luke coming off the bench, you know, it's a it's a very different dynamic in the middle. So they're still coming to terms with that, and and I think they've just, yeah, they they've lost a bit of that aura. I think we spoke about we mentioned last week, Kenby, where I, I don't think they have that fear factor they they once had. 
Yeah, and, and this is not. I'm not questioning their te- their their ability as a football side. They're, they're certainly when they when they get it right and they play well, they're they're still they're still regarded as you know, the best team in the competition, in my opinion. If if everyone went out and played their best football, I think their game stands up against everyone else. But um, yeah, I, I I think with the combination of losing those two key players, and just now people starting to think, well, you know. Let's let's not go out and fear Penrith. Let's get out there and challenge them. I, I think which has brought them back to the pack a little bit. What do you think of that, Jacko? Happy with that explanation? Mate, <laughs> <laughs> Mate some great insights there. Uh, <laughs> quick follow-up. Good on you, brother. Kempi and the, uh, the coaches consultant, Kempi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, in the, the leadership group of the team, do you guys talk about those kind of things of going, you know what, you know, that loss there, that's not too bad. We're really hoping for a, you know, a good end of the season or, is, you know, every loss is a loss and, suck, you know, that sucks. Yeah, well, you try to, you break it down, don't you? You break it down game by game and, and you find, you know, you find the, the reasons as to why you may have performed a certain way. And, and there, there's usually... More times than not, there's there's glaring things that stand out, and and in particular, like the the, the leaders of the team and the key position guys, you, you notice them and you note them as the game's being played. So already when the game yep. is done and and then you come into your you know you sort of review phase of of the of the match, you know exactly where things went wrong and you sort of you go into a game with a game plan and if things aren't executed properly, you you, you address those issues and which is where you're always looking to improve. But, um, you know, I think when you look at that, that Penrith side, you know, yes, very different looking team. They play slightly different, but, uh, you know, I'll reiterate at their very best, you know, they're, if, if they can find their very best um, for the most part of the remainder of this season, finishing the top four and they play that last month of football as good as they have in, in previous final s- series, mate, that, they'll be hard to beat again. Just uh, to reiterate yeah. Smithy's points just there, from a junior perspective, because obviously I was never in a, a senior playing group, if you walked in after on a Monday and you knew that you had done all the little things right in a game and you had lost, basically the video session was like, boys, let's keep building. All right, yeah, you know, a few little things here or there, mm-hmm. and it wasn't that dramatic. But if you walked in and had won, but you hadn't stuck to your principles, you hadn't stuck to the structures that you guys had all agreed to, you actually might be getting a revenue. And so it's more about sticking to the processes from a junior perspective anyway. That's the way I always felt is like if we stuck to the process that we had all agreed to and ripped in, we it would usually be a positive meeting. Whereas if we got a win but we were throwing the ball out the back and carrying on or whatever, we actually got a rev up. I'm not sure, Smithy, if you got anything to add on to that. Or... Yeah, no, I agree, mate. Like sometimes it just... Yeah, the opposition are good and you need to acknowledge that. that you just, you're, you're beaten by a better side on the day. If you go out there and execute your game plan, well, you know, you sort of go back and go, okay, well, how can we improve on that? those small improvements? If you get the basic, like the fundamentals of the game wrong, where which some clubs do week on week, that's that's when you need to sit down and go, hey, look, that's not good enough. Address those issues and make them better at training and hopefully you're better prepared for the next week. All right, thank you so much, Jacko. Appreciate it, mate. Thanks for the time, gentlemen. Good on you, mate. There he is, the great Jacko. Thank you, mate. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it. We're going to head to a break. After the break, we've got plenty to talk about the rise of the Raiders, radical changes to the contracting mess, and also key features of the changes that would include in the contracting mess. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith and myself. Uh, Let's talk about the rise of the Raiders. Now, they have now sit in seventh position. They've won five in a row. Uh, they haven't lost a game since that thrashing by the Panthers, fifty-three to twelve. What do you what do you reckon about the Raiders, Smithy? Are they genuine? You know, are they going to be that battler side that makes it tough for teams? Or do you think that they could genuinely build towards a title push this year? Yeah, look, I I think they can certainly um, be a force. Uh, will I go as far as saying could they push for a title? Oh, it doesn't look likely. It it doesn't look particularly likely at the moment when you when you look at some of the other quality football sides but this season is so close um, it's really hard to sort of point a finger at, at one team at the moment you'd probably just say South like mm. they're, 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 they should be premiership favourites but 
you know, with how up and down the season has been, you know, premiership favouritism changes every fortnight. Mm. It was the Broncos for a little bit and then, you know, the Panthers, you know, they come good and then you say the Sharks and then they, they lost, a, they dropped a couple of games that they should have won. Now it's the Rabbitohs. So we've had, you know, three or four sides sort of put their hands up at the moment. But you can't ignore the, the Raiders. They've just been, they've half flown under the radar, haven't they? Oh, massively. With the, with the way that they're going. So I think they've got the, is it the equal longest streak with South or is South won six? I think South won six. Yeah, I think they've won six. So, you know, winning five, and, and we've we've mentioned this on the show before, Kempi, whenever you can string, you know, sort of three plus wins together in this competition, it skyrockets you up the ladder very quickly. Mm. Very quickly. Like they're, they're, they're sitting... Um, they're sitting well. They're sitting seventh on for and against, but like that, they're fourteen points on the table. So are Penrith, who are sitting third. So you know the, the goal should just be, hey, listen, let, let's just keep winning, let's just keep winning, and someone above us, they'll, they'll have a loss. They'll have a loss. Like they, they're they're bound to. Mm. You know, you look at well, look, look at this weekend, the matchup between Dolphins and Melbourne, they're. Um, they're both sitting above Canberra at the moment, fifth and sixth, respectively. One of those teams are going to lose. Well, you'd think mm. so. Highly unlikely it's going to be a draw at the end of the game. But, um, you know, so Canberra, if they win again this week, up they go. They just continue to climb. And they play that style of footy. And I know, and I know, you know our, our listeners are probably thinking, yeah, I've heard this all before. But for those that haven't heard it, they play that style of footy that... You know, when they get their little groove going, they drag opposition teams down to that that grindy style of footy that a lot of a lot of teams aren't comfortable playing in, mm. and they, that's when that's when they get the best out of themselves. I got to say, it's such a testament to the organisation in regards to everything that's happened this year. If you yeah. just read the headlines and you didn't watch the games of rugby league, you would think that the Raiders are at the bottom of the ladder. Yeah, it's a disaster. <laughs> the whole season is over. Yeah. And I just think it's such a credit to CEO. I think it's Ferner, obviously Ricky Stewart as a coach. Mm -hmm. You know, it was only a couple of weeks ago that they lost their absolute heart and soul of the club. And they are now five in a row during that period. That's a sign of a really strong club. And I think that it shows Ricky's matured as a coach. Obviously, the club is maturing. Whereas I think Raiders of yesteryear, even pre-grand final, I, I, I... I mean, it might be a bit harsh to say, but I think that they completely implode if something like this happened at the start of a season. But they're actually yeah. sitting in a better position than they were last year, even though all the dramas happened. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I remember it was funny. I was speaking to... I, was spe- I don't know if I was talking on radio or just in conversation with, with people around the Gold Coast, but I was talking about the Raiders and, oh, mate, like how bad are they going? It, was, it might have been after the first month or five weeks. And, um, you know, I said, well, hey, listen... Like, don't don't write them off too early because if you remember just back to last year, Kempi, they they had a pretty ordinary start as well, and then this season again they won one game in their first five, and of course that 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 last loss that they had was you know it was an absolute hiding against Penrith where Ricky Stewart come out and said you know he's highly embarrassed um, of his team's performance and he pretty much apologised to the fans that come out that day and all the members that support the club, but since then they've turned it around and haven't have not dropped a single game since. Mm. So um, I think that sort of coincided, funnily enough, with Jack, the Jack White announcement, mm. that, was, that he was going over to the, the, the Bunnies next year. So whether it, whether it is a, a bit of a, you know, a point to you know, help send Jack off um, in his final year at the Raiders, that may play a small part. I think the loss to Penrith, where they were, they were extremely embarrassed with their performance, I think that's played a small part as well. But they've just found themselves in this, this sort of, I don't know, this this groove at the moment where they they've got a lot of things right and they've found a game plan that's working against most teams. And other things to mention, their nine has changed a few times this year. Danny Levi has been injured, who was apparently going to start at nine. Xavier Savage has barely played any first grade this year. I think one game. Obviously, he had I think the broken jaw in the in the trial match, if not round one. Yep. They've had forwards out injured. I, I just think that, and I'm I'm one of those people that after four weeks we're sitting there going, I don't think the Raiders can make the eight. I just, I just don't know if they've got the depth in their squad to handle, you know, injuries and all all of that different um, 
mm. things that can happen during a year. But yeah, yeah you got to commend him, man. It's just such a Ricky Stewart side, and yeah. I love the fact that there's a DNA there. Like yeah. a lot of clubs don't have DNA. Like they're not playing as to what the history represents, whereas the Raiders are playing like that, and I love it. Yeah. And depending on what you know, this Origin series brings as far as you know, representation for the Raiders, they they may have um, a few um, or a couple of players representing each of the states throughout that that series. But you know, if you look over their next sort of four to six weeks that they they play, like this week they take on Manly at home. Uh, Manly not in great form at the moment. I think you know they probably win that one. Then they face a tough test against the Rabbitohs. Yeah, you know, and and this is where I said, depending on who they they're missing um, in Origin, if they have a few out, maybe they don't have a few out. I know the Rabbitohs will. Maybe they find an opportunity to get the Rabbitohs missing a couple of players during that first Origin camp. Then they take on the Tigers. They take on the Warriors at home. Then they got to buy. Wow. So you know, they could possibly, possibly, if they continue to play well, of course. And, and play with the, with the form and the confidence that they've had over the last five weeks, they, they could go unbeaten for the next four weeks, Kempi. Yeah. Which, and if they do that, so let's say they, they, you know, in some way find an opportunity to win 10 games in a row, they, they, they could be sitting on top of the table halfway through the season. Yeah. Wow. Which would be it'd remarkable be, after only would, winning one in your first five. Yeah, mate. It would be absolutely incredible. Now... Let's talk about the NRL's radical change to fix contracting me- uh, the contracting mess. The RLPA has backed Wayne Bennett's and the NRL's plans to fix the game's current contracting system. Mm-hmm. Key features of the changes would include it would guard coaches and club officials from commenting on speculation over player movements, having clubs lodge formal offers for players in a centralised register managed by the NRL without revealing the overall value. It would ban players and agents from talking to rival clubs until they into the final year of their contract unless given permission. It given an incumbent club the last chance to negotiate with a player, restricting a development player from signing with another club until after round six of the season in the final year of the contract. What do you reckon about all this, Smitty? Well, there's a lot to digest there, Kempi. Um, I don't mind a couple of those points there, like giving an incumbent club the last chance to negotiate with a player. I I actually Mm. like that. Mm. Um, I do like the, the opportunity for... You know, let, let, and let's just say for argument's sake, like in the Jack Whiten situation. So, you know, we're all made aware that, that the Raiders lodged an official contract or an offer with the NRL um, to, to re-sign Jack Whiten at the club. He then goes and talks with the Rabbitohs and decides he wants to go. In that situation, the opportunity to go back, the Raiders then get the opportunity to go, well, listen, we're going to bump our offer up again, mate before you sign anywhere else. So I do I do like that. I, I like the fact that, um, you know, a player that is considering leaving um, any particular club, that, that, that particular club gets an opportunity, last say type of thing, last rights. Um, that the development player stuff, I like that as well. The issue around, uh, you know, like gagging coaches and officials and particularly the... Um, banning players and agents from talking from rival clubs, how, how are they going to police that? I know. How, how, how in God's earth can they police anyone from talking with a rival club or rival you know, club football manager or list manager, whatever it is? How are they going to stop that? Mm. There's no, they can't do that. They, like, mm. And I'm not saying they can't do it from a legal point of view. They physically cannot do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Be, like, yeah. say, 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 I'm a player agent, and you're a football manager of, you know, the Broncos, and I've got a player that's playing at the Melbourne Storm, but he's looking to move. How how are the NRL and the RLPA going to police me from flying to Brisbane? Mm. You know, sending you a text message and saying, "Hey, mate, want to catch up for a coffee?" Yeah, yeah. They'd have to literally record the coffee conversation. That's what I mean. Evidence as to what was spoken about. That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a tough one. I, I um I like a, a few of these changes more from a PR perspective, and what I mean by that is what I hate about contract negotiations at the moment. And I understand why clubs do it, why player managers do it, why players do it. Like everyone is just trying to make themselves look like in the best light. But I do hate at the moment where 
certain mistruths are kind of alluded to and a player is made to look bad because then that makes the club look better. I think if we had structure around that, for example, the last say, where it's it's official that the incumbent club gets the last say, mm-hmm. I really like that Yep. because then they can't pretend like, oh, well, they didn't make me an offer. Or, That's right. You know what I mean? It's, yep. it's official. Like yes. They got the last chance and they still didn't hit the mark that we were talking about. You know, It takes the vagueness out of what the current market is. Yep. And and I'm just thinking of it from a fan's perspective. I, I'm not for releasing um, contract amounts at all. I no. think it should be private. By sellers, of course. It, yeah. yep. I don't think that it helps in any way. And I don't think that the public knowing is going to stop anyone from breaching the cap. Do you think if they're going to lie to professional orders, they're not going to... Anyway, <laughs> yeah. so that, that aside, but I do w- hope that we can get much clearer insight into the process for fans that doesn't uh, invade the privacy of the clubs and the players. Because I do think that the fans are kind of unfairly left out of the process and they are so invested in it. What, what do you reckon about that, Smithy? Yeah, no, I agree, mate. And, and I think it, it hurts... From a fan's point of view, I think it hurts to see players, particularly when, they, when they're when signing contracts like so far out from their end date. Mm. You know what I mean? Like when they're, when they're a season and a half away from finishing their contract and you see players doing that at the moment, um, signing with rival clubs and they've still got like a full season to play. Yeah. I think fans get a little bit upset with that situation because all you need then is that that particular player that certain player to have a couple of quiet games and then there's questions about their commitment mm. um to the club are they have they already left have they given up they're not trying which is you know it's not great for the fans but it's not nice for that particular player too so mm. hopefully there's some changes around that i do know from an from an rlpa point of view so the 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 the, the group or the union representing the players they do talk about how um they feel the players need um, a, a particular or a certain amount of time to be ready to make a move. Mm. So if you're moving from club to club, or you or you or you have to relocate interstate to play for the new club, they feel as though that if you if there's only if there's a window at the end of the season, Kempi, to mm. make these changes, it's it's not long enough. Um, not sure whether that's the case or not because I think people make changes quite quickly in in other industries. Um, you know, within a, a two-week period, but um, yeah, it's a diff- it's a it's a difficult one. But I I do like how um, you know there's there's a little bit more sort of openness about the negotiation process, mm. um, and the, there's a little bit more understanding you know for the fan um, about you know where players are at with their contract, what they're thinking, and and the ability to try and for their for their particular club to retain that that player or you know that they've done their best, or maybe they've decided no, like we, you know that the offer for that player to leave is greater than what we're feeling, and so all the fans are across everything and and, and how it's been dealt with. We're going to head to a break. After the break, we're going to talk about who's climbing up the Bailey Ladders. He's tonight and catch NRL Immortal and Kangaroos coach Mal Meninga for the Throwdown live tomorrow from midday right here on SEN 1170 AM. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. Time to see which young players are climbing up the Bailey Ladder. Worksite trusted for 60 years. Over 60 years, Smithy. What have we got? Oh, over 60 years, the Bailey Ladder. Look what I've found, Kempe. I've oh, found the ladder. There it is. There it is. It's Who... back. Oh, my God. Finally. Now I think, you can get uh, some uh, work done around there. I think, um, yeah, I think Jace from our Gold Coast studios, he must have had some housework to do. He's borrowed it for a few weeks, but he's returned Thank it finally. You. Thanks, Jace. Thank Woogie. Yep. Thank you. Uh, back to our segment. <laughs> uh, young players climbing the ladder. Billy Smith, all right. Let, let's talk about the Roosters. N- not great over the last couple of weeks, uh, but this man is, has been a shining light, I guess, for the, that footy side. Uh, just his 14th game in the NRL. Only 23 still, ran for 120 metres, one try assist, one line break and seven tackle breaks. He was strong for the Chookies. Uh, second nomination, Will Warbrick, the man that the Storm recruited from Rugby Sevens. He's played in the Olympics, of course. Um, in just his 10th game, uh, Will Warbrick had one try, one line break, two tackle breaks and ran for 140 metres in that win against the Broncos last Thursday. And my third nomination goes to Blake Wilson at the Doggies. Played his debut on the weekend, Kempe. Um, only 20 years old. He ran for 197 metres, 
one line break and 11, 11 tackle breaks in wow. the one match. Holy. That's a fair effort on debut. Oh, man. On debut. And, and I, he had the headgear on the edge there, and he wasn't the biggest fella either. He wasn't the biggest fella, but he just was fought in every single tackle. Every, you know, that mm. you, you, can't, you can't buy experience, but sometimes you can't buy that that youthful exuberance as well. You know, just that want to be out there, the want to be in a part of the contact, in part of the plays. Uh, and I agree, mate. I thought Wilson was outstanding. And sometimes youthful energy is just what a team needs. Now, I know the doggies are struggling at the moment in regards to where they are on the ladder, but I just think there is so much promise there. And I think that in the next two to three years, we are going to see the dividends being paid. We yeah. really are. Uh, whereas a few years ago, it just didn't seem like there was a plan like there is now. No. Exactly, mate. I think it's uh, great signs for the future. That's why that's why doggies fans are so excited at the moment. Mm. As you mentioned, mm. like they're not winning every game, but there's some really good signs for the future. They've unearthed some uh, some young talent at that footy club, which is great. Now we're going to head to a break. After the break, uh, we've got Tommy Dearden chat coming up very soon. Then later on in the show, AJ Brimson will join us as well. So Brimo. we've got plenty to talk about, and we're previewing the round. There is so much rugby league to get to, so make sure to stay tuned. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. Now let's talk about some texts that have come through, Smithy. Yes, mate. We've got plenty of texts here. Arvo Capitano Smithers and first mate <laughs> Beak Bloke. <laughs> is there any chance or truth that Smithy will take over Origin Coach when Billy takes over from Belzer? Wow. Is that a scoop? Well, Craig Bellamy has to um, retire first, so that might be in another, what, 10 years, I think? Yeah, I reckon 10 con- yeah, conservative so, 10. Yeah. No, m- maybe not. I don't think so. Uh, hey, boys, with the form of Luki and Tamalolo, uh, Neem and Leilua to come back, do you think Nanai will be selected in a 13 after his suspension? Good oh, question. I think so. I, I, and although I, I must say, um, Nanai hasn't been at, in the same you know, level of form that he was last year, for whatever reason, I'm, I'm not too sure. We could probably ask Tommy Deard and who's coming up soon um, about that, but... Um, no, I, I think you know when he returns from suspension, I'm sure he's taken this four week suspension as a, as an opportunity to get a little bit fitter and get himself back to where he was last year, so he's ready to go. He may come off the bench when he returns, but I think the, the best option for the Cowboys moving forward is is Nanai starting in the back row for them. I tell you what, a back row of Nanai, Luki, Leilua, Tamalolo, or Cotter, yeah, ooh, doesn't get much better than that now. We have the great Tommy Dearden on the line. You there, uh-huh. Tommy? Yeah, no, thanks, guys. Cheers for having me. Thomas, how are you, mate? Smithy? Yeah, yeah going good. How are you, Smithy? I'm all right, mate. What's 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 been the program today, mate? Bit of training? Yeah, we had our had our main session today, so it's a uh, yeah, pretty um, full on training session. Lots of tackling, but we're um, yeah ready to go and keen for the weekend. Mate, it's uh, Beak here. I uh, absolutely, obviously, you get your back-to-back victories. You're playing some great footy now. What I've really noticed is it's not necessarily the actual, the the physical side of things, but just the amount of energy around a play every time it happens with you guys over the past two weeks. Is that something you've spoken about, that you need to be a bit more energetic when something goes your way or you need to bring the boys together? Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah. Um... I think we, we put a, a big emphasis on um, like celebrating the little wins and, and the little moments in the game. And I suppose if someone makes a good play or makes a good tackle or forces an error, we um, we try and celebrate that. And we just feel like that um, gives the group plenty of energy and um, keeps us in the game. Tommy, like the, the the losses that you've suffered this year, like the majority of the losses that you that you've where you've gone down, it hasn't been by a lot. Like it's been you know four six points, been a couple of blowouts, but. You know, you've been you've been pretty close. Has that at times been a little bit frustrating? Thinking, well, we're not at our best, but we're pretty close still. Yeah, it has. I think um, that's probably has been the like the frustrating and I suppose disappointing thing to to start the year is that a a lot of those losses we we felt like we really um, hurt ourselves during the game with mm. whether it was either silly errors or penalties or um or, or even little effort areas at stages as well and. I think that is is quite frustrating because they're, they're games that yeah we feel like we we should have won if we we had got our game right. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's about just putting that behind us now and 
where we're looking to to get better each week and and keep improving on on those areas in the game and we can keep getting better and and put a string of wins together i think the the ladder and the comp is really close at the moment so um yeah a few wins in a row puts you puts you back in the eight now mate you've uh, been partnered with the great chadwick townsend <laughs> how uh first of all how is his hairline getting stronger by the day and second of all he's actually <laughs> no you go ahead mate Oh, I was going to say, he's come in with a few um, filthy chops lately, actually. He's, <laughs> he's blaming it on the barber, though. Oh, my God. At least have the guts, Chadwick. Have the guts to claim that terrible yeah. haircut, son. Um, but, mate, on a, on a <laughs> serious... Have to start claiming that. <laughs> <laughs> on a serious note, though, mate, what's it been like learning off a guy like Townsend? Townsend? Because he's really methodical. He can teach you so much about structured part of the game. What do you reckon you've learned the most off him? Uh, I think his composure and the and the way he um, speaks to the group is something that I've really learnt from him. Um, he's very clear and uh, and just composed with the with the way he talks. And I think yeah, that, that's probably been the biggest thing. I think me being a, a young half, one of the things that like I think takes a fair bit of time to learn is is that leadership and and getting the message across to your playing group and whether it's like um, being relaxed or then making it intense as well and. Yeah, yeah, Chaddy's like a really great leader and um, I think a lot of us young players have taken so much from, from having him around the group. Mate, as well, in regards to your position, now you're obviously playing six and you're playing fantastic. Love watching you play. Are, are you? Did you consider yourself a six all along or are you more of a seven or are you happy to play both? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to play both. Um, I think I just enjoy playing in the halves and um, at the moment, I think uh, I was obviously struggling for for a couple of years playing in the seven jersey, and it was great to have someone like um, Chatty come up and take control of the team, and it allowed me to just um, get back and and focus on my individual game and and try and find my strengths again. And so, um, yeah, I'm kind of happy to, to to play anywhere at the moment, and um, if if I end up filling in that seven jersey at some stage, that'd be great. But at the moment, I'm just focused on um on playing six and and getting that part of my game right. And mate, so you're up there in Townsville. You're representing sort of the north of Queensland, the entire region. You 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 born you were born in Toowoomba, but you grew up in Mackay. So you're sort of up up the north sort of way. What's it like um, representing that that entire region with their footy side? Because we know they're fanatic about their rugby league up north. What's it like representing those people? Yeah, it's awesome. I think like people up in North Queensland are, are really humble and they're they're hard working as well. So we we always talk about that's how we we want our footy team to be. Also, is humble and hard working, and they're they're very passionate fans. And um, like footy's absolutely crazy up here in North Queensland, and yeah, they they definitely love it and they they get behind us um, even through the tough times as well. Speaking of the uh, representing where you're from, mate, your debut for Queensland. Last year, mate, what was it like? What do you? What's the the one thing that stands out to you when you ran out in that field in the Maroons jersey? Uh, probably like the crowd roar was was pretty awesome, and um, I think just looking down and and seeing that I was um, wearing wearing the Maroons jersey, and I'm actually getting goosebumps at the moment talking about it. But <laughs> yeah, looking down and and seeing that that I'm actually wearing a Maroons jumper, and I'm out on Suncorp Stadium representing. Um, my family and and my last name and also the whole Queensland state and yeah it's um it's the proudest moment of my life I, I still um still can't believe that I that I got to run out on Suncorp and and play in an Origin decider um so yeah it's something I'll never forget and mate you were part of the the, the Maroon side of course for that entire series and you made your debut in game three what what did that do for your confidence going back to clubland like did did you go back thinking like I'm, you know, I feel the, I feel like the game has slowed down now because I've played, you know, in the showpiece of of what what our game's about with Origin. How did you feel going back to club footy? Yeah, I think it uh, it definitely helped with my confidence. Um, I think just being around like those players and also the coach and staff like yourself and Billy and and Jono and and everyone else that was involved. Um, I think just being able to be around you guys and, and learn how. Um, how you approach the game and how you look at the game was something that that gave me a lot of confidence to come back to clubland and uh, yeah it's um yeah don't really know what else to say apart from that yeah. <laughs> but, now I want to mate after such a high I want to bring you down to a, a massive low <laughs> what about the carry on from Drinky Holmes <laughs> and Chad Townsend the Players Club reckon they're good at golf or something what's going on there 
Yeah, well, hopefully, they, if I give them a quick shout out now, they might give me a bit of free merch because they're not giving any out. Of my <laughs> oh, what? How dare they? They're making all the boys pay for it. What? Oh, no, they oh, are man. not. Wow. They are not. We've just got a scoop, Kempi. <laughs> That's a scoop. Oh, my God. That, that, I mean, you know what, Chadwick? There's a reason why his hairline is as strong as it is. He's, he's, <laughs> all the money's going to his hairline. It went straight to his hairline. <laughs> yeah. uh, mate, yeah. uh, but, mate, just lastly, mate, what's, what's the goal? for you guys this year, season? Is it, is it to stay calm, stay patient, and get into that eight and then make a run? What's the kind of chat internally? Uh, the the chat, we're just really focusing on, on um, week by week. And uh, we've we got a big next couple of weeks like leading into the bye, and I think they're, they're really important games for us to win. And um, I think the, the biggest thing is making sure that we just keep improving and getting better. And I think we can build in nicely to the to the back end of the season if we can um, get get some really great wins under our belt. So uh, yeah, that that's going to be the main focus, mate. Uh, that is the great the great Tommy did, and thank you so much for joining us. Good on I you, really Tommy. Do appreciate it, and uh, good luck for the rest of the season. Love watching you play, mate. No, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Good on you, mate. Get Chatty to send some merch down to the captain's run. Please. Yes, please. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Surely. I'll give them a shout out. We'll rep Players it. Club, you got to get behind them. Get Players on. Club. It's actually the dot players dot club underscore on Instagram. There you go. Shout there you out. go. There it is. There you go. There Free you merch, go. surely. Anyway, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Tommy, for joining us. And uh, after the break, we got AJ Brimson coming up soon. It is, oh. I mean, it's incredible. See you on the other side. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. Got some text here, Smitty. Uh, can we ease up with the Queenslanders on the show? Fair dinkum. I can deal with the two of you for a few hours, but please don't oh. push it. Lol. Western Sydney Eagle. Oh, the Western Sydney Eagle. Come on. Well, we uh, have Western our fair Sydney. share, don't we? Yeah, well, I just wanted to say real quickly, it's actually the producer who is a New South Welshman that organises the guests. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, does, he just love, does he secretly love Queenslanders and that's why you see a lot of them? I don't know. I'm just going to throw that out there. Uh, we've I think got some he more does. Texty. Yeah, I think he does too. Yeah. Uh, Maybe all the new rules, uh, no, even if the current club has a final offer, that's still assuming that it's about money. Mm. And plenty of players have taken less to stay or go. It's like we believe that there is more... Something. There is more to a decision ma- than making money. Uh, <laughs> it's like we can't believe... I think he's saying... Oh, sorry. He's, he's saying, I think we can't believe that there's more to the decision. As if to say that players, there's a lot more involved rather than just how much just the a amount. player will sign for. So he's actually, I think, giving the compliment to the players uh, and everyone involved. Now we're going to head to a break. After the break, the great AJ Brimson joins us. Welcome back to the captain's run and feel the energy as a Titans member this season. We have the great AJ Brimson on the line. You there, Brimo? I'm there, lad. I'm there. Mate, I'm I, here. I, Brimo, I just, I just want to set the record straight. So off air, you, you've been run around a bit, stuffed around by us today. And off the air, our producer said, uh, apologise for it. I just want to say on the record, I am not sorry for stuffing you around today. Hey, I would expect nothing less than the unprofessionalism from you on your end. I have no idea. <laughs> mate, mate, we're meant mate. to keep the guests on our show, Kempi. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Mate, I apologise. My on. bad. Sorry, come Brimo. On. Sorry, bros. Now, um, mate, how you been? Obviously, you suffered a, a devastating injury a couple of weeks ago. H- how's the headspace and how's the uh, recovery going? Um, yeah, the headspace is all good. Uh, obviously, it's not ideal, but it's. Um, I'm in rehab with boys, you know, that are out all season. Um, they don't get to even play one game this year with much more significant injuries. So, um, hopefully, you know, we'll be back out there in a couple of weeks. And, you know, hopefully have a strong finish to the season. So headspace is all good and it's coming along well. I've been running well for a couple of weeks now, but I'll probably take a bit more time with this one just to make sure um, it doesn't happen again. Hey, Brimo, the last couple of weeks, the boys have been pretty good. They they had the two wins in, in a row, of course. First with Manly, um, then they beat Para, but they suffered a pretty um, awful defeat against Newcastle Knights. How how are the playing group at the moment? I know you're not training with them, but how are all the boys? How how are they feeling heading into this weekend against the doggies? Um, yeah, obviously a bit, um, you know, not as uh, buzzing around at the moment as, as they have been the last couple of weeks. But um, they're obviously we got the Bulldogs into a bye, so I think um, one thing we have done this year well is kind of respond from poor performances. So I think you know, especially leading into a bye, um, I think the boys will be you know pretty keen to get one back on the dogs. So I'm looking forward to Sunday. 
And mate, it, it really felt a couple of weeks ago that you guys had kind of turned a corner. Is it is the chat around the place? Yeah, let's let's stick to the processes that we'd really, I guess, developed this season. It, it seemed like this year you'd put a real big focus on. Yet we can score points, but we need to hang in games. Is it is a chat around basically like let's not allow this to kind of derail how much progress we've made? Yeah, I think it was a bit of a case of similar to what you said. I think we've kind of. Uh, kind of understanding and realised, you know, what it kind of takes in terms of how we want to play. And we know we can score points, but it's about how we finish sets and, you know, yardage defence and that sort of stuff. But um, I think it was, yeah, we're not going to, you know, let this one game affect us. Like, the comp is that close. You get a couple wins in a row and you're all of a sudden, you know, back up in the top, top six or whatever. So um, it was, I think it was a bit of a case of, you know, a couple of good performances in a row and probably looking at the ladder a bit and, reading into the media about the Knights and then probably taking um, maybe them not as serious as we should have. So I think it's probably another good little wake-up call um, that we're still kind of learning on the way. Hey, mate, great news. Um, was it last week or the week before, JC, Jaden Campbell uh, recommitting to the club for the two years? Where where, where do you yep. see where do, where do you see him fitting into the team moving forward? Of course, you know, quite a young man still. Um, yourself at full-back, you, that's where you started this year. Where does he fit into the, the, the line up, the equation or the puzzle for the Titans moving forward, mate? Um, yeah, it is a bit of a puzzle, to be honest. Um, like, JC's a good mate of mine. And, you know, I kind of, we've been chatting, uh, you know, pre signing and um, post. And I think it's probably leaning towards um, one of us going to six, one of us going to fullback eventually. Yep. Um, but. I mean, I was listening to your guys' show the other day, and thanks, Kempi, for saying I should be 14 like that. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> what? Oh, oh, <laughs> That's mate. outrageous. It's a carve-up. <laughs> oh, no. Brimo, yeah. you know I love you, brother. You'd always be my number one, baby. Uh, nah. Um, obviously, I think it just kind of depends. Um, I think they're probably more leaning towards moving JC into six, but it just depends, I think, with my body. Uh, hopefully, I come back from this. I mean... I don't, I've never had a hamstring injury and all of a sudden I've had two so hopefully it's a bit of a one-off and um, it'll be sweet but I think you know I think uh, we'll probably end up long term one at six one at one and just um, whoever's at what well, I'm not too sure yet and, and speaking you know in, on a serious note in regards to you know one or six I do you I guess obviously you prefer to play fullback but you are so damaging when you do play you can kind of impact the game you know, from either position. Do you per- personally have a per- preferred position, Brimo? Yeah, I think um, just moving back to fullback this year, just kind of, I just felt like really at home again. Um, I just kind of, I like just popping up around the rock for off- offloads and little things through the middle of that, whereas I felt as a six, especially, I know you can still swing both sides, but once they kind of numbered up on me, I just felt like I couldn't uh, really do too much. And I think at the end of the year, I kind of just started leaving my side I think I started playing better at six at the end of last year when I was kind of just playing like a fullback mm. um, but then moving back at the start of this year I thought I was you know enjoying it and going alright and then obviously just a couple of injuries but I'm excited to um, you know get back out there I think probably the first couple of games I do come back I will be off the bench anyway just trying to you know probably limit my minutes around 30 minutes just trying to don't go straight back into the deep end 80 minutes of fullback and make sure my hammies are right but yep. hopefully I can finish here off well there and um, you know go into that position again next year. Mate, it's, it, uh, the good thing is, as the Titans, you're in such a good position where you've got top-tier players in key uh, key positions. Now, speaking of top-tier player, the big fella, David Fafita, how mm. good is he going? Have, what, what difference have you noticed with him this year? Hey, he's... Um, I think one thing you can tell on the field is he's taken a lot of yardage carries, um, which I think probably he's been criticised you know, from our team and, and from media in the past, probably... Um, taking those tough carries when he's not just going to score a try. Um, he's been awesome out of the power and end. Um, but he's just really strict with himself at the moment. He's been sober since, you know, around Christmas and he takes photos of every meal he has and sends it to a dietitian. So he's on a strict diet. He doesn't, he hasn't been drinking. And I think it's showing. He, I mean, that, um, that sprint, uh, you know, that runaway guy on the weekend is pretty impressive. He's about the 70 something minute, um, for a big girl like that. And I think that's, I think it's quite, easy to see the change in him, you know, because he's fitter and he can do more. Mm. And we're getting a lot more out of him. So I think I think he's going to be our best this year. And I'm hoping he's going to, you know, probably get picked in origin. And um, But no, nah, he's, he's been good for us. 
Mate, another player that's been outstanding too, Big Mo Fodawako. I think he's been having one of the, the better seasons of his career so far. But I want to ask you about the coach, Justin Holbrook. Now, how's he how's he going? Has he changed much from the way he coached the team last year? Because if, if when I watch your games, that I've actually worked on a few, watch the Titans regularly, particularly when they're playing at home. Um, it looks like you're, you're playing a more sort of open style game of footy. You're happy to throw the ball around, particularly from your own end, and really test out the opposition defence. Yeah, I think, um, you know, coming into this season, um, he probably had, you know, there was a bit of pressure on a few coaches uh, and he was probably one of them, but he kind of came in more happy and more, you know, excited than, than he had been in the past. And I think that was pretty, pretty infectious to the group. And, and I just think with the addition of Kieran Foran, who was just kind of saying like, you know, the Titans are the type of team that, you know, throw the footy out of their own end, but, you know, can score long range tries, can do that sort of stuff. So, they kind of work together and kind of got the confidence to, you know, play the footy that we would that we like to play, which is sometimes shifting at our own end and playing a bit more eyes up footy. And Justin's pretty big on backing us, um, on you know taking cues and that sort of stuff if we think it's on. Mate, Brimo, thank you so much for coming on, brother. Really do appreciate it, man. Thanks. You just ruined my afternoon, but thank you very much. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Holy, See you, mate. There you have it, Brimo, most arrogant player in the game. Seriously, it doesn't get much more arrogant than that. The great Brimo. Oh. We're gonna we're gonna head to a break. Absolute legend, Brimo. We're gonna head to a break. After the break, we've got plenty more to talk about, including Broncos versus Panthers. Welcome back to the Captain's Run and that awesome chat with absolute legend Brimo. Feel the energy this NRL season as a Gold Coast Titans member. Get behind them, Gold Coasters. Get behind them. Get a Titans membership and get more great chats like Brimo uh, had with us earlier on. Now let's get to huge, huge class. Let's preview our game of the round. Thanks to Suncorp. Building a more resilient Queensland. That's the Suncorp spirit. Broncos Panthers, 750 Suncorp Stadium. Reynolds is being rested. Madden starts at halfback. Tenth, it's team news. No changes to the team that beat the Roosters last week. I mean, I don't mean beat. Absolutely decimated the Roosters last week. I don't Smashed know why them. Tom put just the beat. Um, now, Smithy, how do you see this game playing out? And I guess, how important is it for either side to get the W here? Yeah, well, Jock Matten get, gets another opportunity. Um, he played, what, two, three weeks ago? It was against the Rabbitohs, and that's the other game where they were beaten convincingly as well, 32-6, to six, I think it was. So... He gets another opportunity, young fella. Um, speaking with Kevy Walters, he, he's got a huge rap on Jock Madden. Um, loves the way he plays. He's he, he's a confident young man. He loves running the football. Um, just got to get his job done. It's, it's a big test for him this weekend defensively. That's what it is. Um, you know, the, the Panthers, they've got a lot of, you know, really good set plays. They, they have great timing out on their edges. So he's going to have to, you know, double defend certain players and look after... Um, the halves and Dylan Edwards out the back of those plays. Um, big one for him. But, you know, I like this matchup. It, it's 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 going to be good to see where the Broncos are really at now. So they've got to respond from that loss last week <clears throat> against the Storm, which, you know, like I think everyone's had their say on that match last week, Melbourne v Broncos, and how it was really wasn't the, – the players weren't given an opportunity to show us exactly um, – where both teams are at because of some of the decisions made by the officials. But anyway, we move on. Um, Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see exactly how the Broncos respond to that loss. Uh, They'll be up for this one. I think Kevy will have them excited. He wasn't too disappointed with the way they played. They obviously, they played for 20 minutes with with only 12 men. Two um, sin binnings in, in the middle stages of the game. I know there was one late, but that was when the game was already gone. Um, for the Panthers, though, they, um, you know, they they got to be feeling good about what they did last week, um, and um, you know, we'll dig a bit deeper into what we mentioned earlier, where the, the the Roosters were just they just were not there at all. They were not there in any facet of the game, particularly with their effort, their small effort areas in defence, which made things a lot easier for uh, guys like Isaiah Yo to do his work. Um, Jerome Luai had the best game of his uh, season so far. It's going to be good to see <clears throat> if both teams play well exactly where they're at because for mine, you know, I, I, I've i still got small question marks on both teams to see how they play against the quality opposition if they're given an opportunity to play well. Yeah, it's a... Uh, it's, uh, for the Broncos, last week was... 
it wasn't disappointing in regards to the way that they played, in my opinion, but it was disappointing that the referee had such an impact on the game that it's yes. hard to take away from anything from it. Like, yeah. were we resilient or were, did we have some tough calls that, that – uh, did the Storm have a lot of tough calls against them? We don't, mm. we don't know. It was so up and down. Yeah. Uh, and so you're right. I, I, I agree with you, Smithy, that the Broncos have an opportunity here to go, okay, Penrith Panthers just absolutely decimated the Roosters. We can't be a team that gets up for one big game. We need to get up for multiple big games if we consider ourselves a threat this year. And, you know, there are still... I'm closer to saying that the Broncos are a premiership threat this year. Last, this year yes. Just because last week I felt when they lost Reynolds and had two sin bins, I just loved the grit they showed. They didn't let the game get away from them. Yep. Um, the Penrith Panthers now, what an opportunity. If they go out and absolutely bounce the Broncos out by 13-plus... It really is sending massive shockwaves across the competition, and it really is the Rabbitohs and the Penrith Panthers. Then, yeah, that's right. Well, well, you know, if Penrith are to go out and beat the Broncos this week, man, I'm still not, I'm still not going to put a line through the Broncos and say, well, they can't compete. They're not, they're not in it because they can't beat Storm. Sure. They can't beat Broncos. You got to remember, um, Adam Reynolds isn't playing, and as good a quality young man as Jock Madden is, um, and he's got a very bright future. I think we I think we all understand the importance of Adam Reynolds mm. and and particularly over the last month he he's played some some pretty good footy like his kicking game has been outstanding um he's had wonderful combinations with you know his outside men you know the centers and wingers he's got he's, they've got this lovely play at the moment where they they're able to sort of entice the opposition wingers to come in and jam in to try and cut the play off and he and he lobs one over the top to the to you know guys like Cobbo and I think Jesse Arthurs has been playing there the last few weeks with Corey Oates out. He's just he's he's been playing great football. Great football. So mm. with him not being there, I think that contributed to last week's loss as well. because um, mm. he because he injured himself quite early in that match. Um and he's not there again this week. So if they're able to get up and play well, which which they will, I've I've got confidence they'll play well. Um, but whether they'll be good enough to get past the, past the Panthers, that's a different story. So again, like if if they don't win, do we? Where do we? How do we get a gauge, a strong gauge on that? Because they don't actually have their leading man in in Adam Reynolds there. If they do get a win though, without him, well, well then I, I think as you mentioned, mate, that you you can start to talk about well these this team is they are genuine contenders for this year's premiership. Yeah, I think. In regards to win or loss, like I obviously I want them to win, but I'm more focused on. Let's say we get beaten 12-6. I think that's a massive win for us in regards to if we can't put points on. There's a clear reason why Adam Reynolds is in the side. We've got a but defensive wise, you know, you you could make the argument defensively we have just as good a side as the week before. Like you could say Jock Madden's defense is as good as Adam Reynolds. Um, or close to. It's much closer than his attack to Adam Reynolds. So basically, I think it's all about defense this week for the Broncos uh, mm. to show you where they're, they're at rather than results specifically. As I said, like result, obviously we want to win. Yep. But I think it's more about, okay, boys, if you want to look for excuses in attack, we can find mm. them. Yep. But there's no excuses in defense. No. There really isn't. And, and where they're going to have to aim up defensively. I know those guys on the outside, they're going to have their work cut out for them with you know, their certain decision-making and trying to defuse you know, the Cleary kicking game. But where they're going to have to do plenty of work is through the middle. So mm. Penrith, are going to, they're going to come up to Brisbane and they're going to test out their ruck players like Payne Haas and Carrigan and Billy Walters starting at nine. Um you know, last week we seen that they, that's what they did to the Roosters. They had plenty of drop-off plays, plenty of angle plays coming back towards the play of the ball where they made the big men make multiple tackles in a row, Kempe. Mm. And then they, they what they did, they went one, two passes away from the ruck and just enticed. They just give them, the big men of the Roosters, a little opportunity to have a rest. Mm. And if they did, bang, back they went. Luai, yeah. as I said, left foot, left foot. Um, Cleary, he got James Fisher-Harris on an inside pass that went back in between Lindsay Collins and Jared Weir Hargraves for, for a try. You know, they, if if you if you stop moving for one moment in defence, they'll find you out. They're they're a very very good side, Penrith, when they're on their game. Uh, now let's head to our next game. Is I cannot wait for this though. The Panthers they have a real opportunity to send shockwaves across the NRL with another dominant win, and the Broncos have an opportunity to say. 
you know, even without our main man, we really do put up a fight. Yep. Uh, that's game of the round. Thanks to Suncorp. Make sure you're Queensland covered. Search Suncorp Insurance for a quote today. That's the Suncorp Spirit Dragons v Roosters. Oh. Wow. Lomax returns to centre. Benny Hunt moves to halfback. Jacob Little starts at hooker. Sullivan goes to the bench. Moses Mbai out. Roosters. Manu out. Hutchinson starts at halfback. <laughs> Kiri moves to 5'8". Hargreaves has been named a prop. Egan Butcher, Satili Tupanoa start in the second row. How do you see this one, Smithy? Well, yet another halves pairing uh, for the Roosters. That's This is number, what is it, 500 for the year. Tom, <laughs> how many combos this year? Four? I think he's 4,000, he said. Okay, 4,000, right. Yeah. And Tom just wanted to, he wanted to let everyone know he's done some research. It is an absolute myth, myth, that a team that has a coach sacked their, their rebound for that game is that they come out and win. It's actually mm. not a fact. The last, What was it, Can be The last four clubs yeah. to let a coach go, those teams have lost the next two. Next two games. So that that's good signs for the Roosters then. I'll tell you what, you're grasping at straws if you're looking for history of oh. bounce sucked coaches, bouncing back. This are yeah. uh, very, very dire times for Tommy. Very wow. dire times. So for the Dragons, mate, I think... <clears throat> I think Good news, uh, Zach Lomax back in the centres. Um, Jacob Little back in the team as well. I think you and I had both spoken about how we, we were a little bit sort of confused as to why they weren't in the football side. I think that strengthens uh, the Dragons. Roosters, Joey Manu, of course, your world-class player, current uh, golden boot holder. Um, that's, that's a huge out for the Roosters. Look, for mine, I think if the Roosters want to get down there and win this game, which, you know, of course, they want to do that, they need to concentrate on the really small effort areas of the game. And that's it. Mm. Take a simple game plan into this match. And, and, and really, I wouldn't even care if they just said, our goal is to get to our kick. Don't worry about anything else. Like, let's just take, let's just take hit-ups if we have to. But let's get into some sort of rhythm of forcing the opposition to run the ball deep from their own end because if they're going to score against us, they're going to have to go, you know, 95, 90 metres, all the way up the other end to score points. And then from there, focus on your defence, all the small little things, any loose balls on the ground, Kempi, it's got to be a Roosters player coming up with it. Mm. All those small type of little effort plays that they that they weren't good at at all last week. I think mm. that needs to be their mentality for this game. Yeah, I agree, mate. I think they need to strip it right back and almost... Look, it would be impossible to do, but almost just completely mm. remove from their mind how good they are on paper. Completely remove from their mind that, oh, we've got these superstars that will be able to get us out of trouble and just go all the way back to really simple game plan and going, we aren't going to beat them with talent. We're going to grind them out of a game and then slowly build on, on the, the processes and slowly build adding pieces onto that puzzle because it, it just... You know, you watched last week, and I mean, you've been watching the start of most seasons for the Roosters over the last few years. It, it, they just seem no closer to finding out what they are as a footy tie- side in regards to structure. Um, yeah. And so I just, I agree, mate. I think they need to strip it right back, right back. You know, centers play like centers normally do in very basic game plans, wingers play like wingers do in very normal. You know what I mean? Like really, yep. really simple stuff, and then build on top of that. Yeah. Um, just just break down your roles. And, yeah. you know, you don't... To to think that you need to have 20 carries for 200 metres to have a good game, that's 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 not always the case. Mm. Just just play your role for the team and allow others to be at their best and, and help... Try and help others extract the best out of yourself. Mm. I think that's what, you know, a lot of a lot of people have been talking about the Roosters where, the, you know, the, they've got wonderful, you know, world-class players individually but they just can't seem to find a formula that works as a footy side um, that's that's really what they need to come up with but off, particularly off a loss and the way that they played you know you could see in the sheds afterwards like well at half time Trent Robinson locked all of his assistants out of the the dressing room like wow. it was 24 blot at half time wow. he was the only person in there speaking so clearly you know he's not overly happy with, with the way the team's going at the moment and some of the efforts from those players that we seen last week, like they're 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 elite players in our competition. Mm. So it, you know, they're not feeling. You can you can see on their faces that they're just they're not feeling good at the moment. They're not feeling good about their football. They need to find 
And they just need to find a reason to turn up on the weekend against the Dragons and and be happy about being there and, and competing and, and find a reason to get out there and, and play their best football. Mm. Now we're going to head to a break. After the break, we'll continue our Round 11 preview. Welcome back to the Captain's Run. Rabbitohs v Eels, Friday 8 p.m. Smitty, how do you see this game playing out? Rabbitohs, just, they're flying, aren't they? Six in a row, uh, key players playing outstanding. And you mentioned earlier, Kempe, they, they had a solid win against the Tigers. You know, not, not their most extravagant win, but you know they, they got the job done. They did it the way they need to do it, 20 nil. Always a nice scoreline when you're keeping the opposition to blot. A um, couple of big ins, though. Uh, well, sorry, one big in. Mitch Moses, he's back for the Eels. He'll, he'll um, certainly uh, help their cause. Uh, the seven being back. Sean Lane, though, just he cannot take a trick at the moment. We, we spoke about our injuries earlier, hamstring injury. So the big man, he's out for a, a little bit. I think the Rabbits get this one done. I, 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 I think they, they just continue on their run. They, they make it seven in a row. <clears throat> the only thing I'd be concerned about is possibly, you know, and I've seen it um, in my time as a player, is some players may be mind not completely on the job. Because there'll, there's a couple of big igna- announcements coming up at the end of the weekend with Origin. Um, sometimes their mind wanders a little bit further away than what it should do down the track. Mm. You know, the players just need to keep keep their mind focused on on the job at hand, and that's that's to be at their very best against Parramatta. Um, and everything else will look after itself. So if they go out there and play the way that we know they can play, it, it, this one's a Rabbitohs win. What an important game for the Eels. Wow. Mm. Uh, the, the season is is slowly but surely slipping out of their grasp. Now, yep. I know it's a congested eight. I understand all that. But they've got to turn it around and turn it around quick because before you know it, uh, the, the the table will begin to sort itself out. Mm. And if you're three or four wins outside the eight, oh, man, that run home is tough. Yeah, it is. They're, they're currently on eight premiership points. I think you've got to be – if you're on 12 right now, um, you're still in touch. Mm. So completely agree with what you said there, mate. If they lose this one, they stay on eight, and a couple of those teams that are on 12, they have wins and kick to 14. Mm. That's, that's yeah, the gap's starting to open up a little bit there. Mm. And I just, I, the Eels, I I almost feel sorry, them to, uh, sorry for them to a degree because you go back to the start of the year, they had an incredibly tough draw, and they lost some of these games by... A very small margin, and also we're ahead in you know, against the Sharks, ahead against the Storm. I'm pretty sure as well. Yep. I think there was another game as well against a top tier club that they could have won. They beat the Panthers, and it's just a. As a fan, I know it must be so frustrating that you go, "How can we go out and beat the Panthers?" Mm-hmm. But then we lose against these other teams that obviously aren't close to where the Panthers are at, mm-hmm. and so I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't write the Panthers, uh, the Eels off yet, but it's got to be in the next two to three weeks. Otherwise, it really is line through them kind of stuff, which is would be so disappointing with the squad they've got. Yeah, absolutely, mate. I, I think yeah, absolutely. They, they, they've um, got great footy in them, but we, yeah, they're just not overly consistent at the moment. And now onto the Sharks v the Knights, uh, Coffs Harbour, uh, Talakai mm. returns. Um, no changes to the Knights team that beat the Titans last week. How do you see this one playing out? Well, KP, if he if he puts another, you know, ten out of ten performance on like he did last week, they're they're right in this. Oh, the Sharks for me, I just I cannot get a read on them. Mm. Like Nico Hines, great player, love love Nico Hines, um, former teammate of of mine. Um, you know, but if if he goes a little bit quiet, so does the Sharks team. I find um, they sort of stop and go. Nico, well, what's going on, Nico? Well, what, you know, we're sort of we get a gauge of how you're going, and he started really. He started on fire um, the other day against Manly, but Manly finished strong. So it wasn't a convincing win by the Sharkies, and only the week before they were embarrassed by the Dolphins. Mm. This is a real danger game for for mine for Sharks. Now, yeah, just a quick. Quick, sorry, just sorry, a quick mate, correction yeah. on myself. Uh, Talakai remains out, rather. He has not returning. So just yeah. a quick correction. Um, so this is a real danger game for them. I know that I think they've gone up early to Coffs Harbour, actually, the Sharkies. So mm. they've been up there preparing for this game. Uh, can I, can I poss- could the Knights possibly beat Sharks? Wow. Really? In an upset. 
Oh, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going Sharkies, but I agree with you, mate. If you, A couple of weeks ago, I would have said, mate, Sharkies are on fire. Yep. And then they go up against the Dolphins and didn't get off the bus. No. And it just, it almost, it blew my expectations out of the water of where I thought they were. Yes. You know, I, I know they had a bit of a rough start, but they'd brought it all back together and they'd had some few defensive, good defensive games. Mm. So if you want to be in the you know the business end of the season they've got to be in the top four so yep. these are the kind of games that you need to pick up early in the season you yep. can't afford to be dropping games like these yep and and you got to practice consistency mm. if you if you feel if, if you consider yourself you know one of the contenders you got to be a lot more consistent than what the sharkies are showing us like their their best is is very good but mm. then they turn up in games where you know they might they might start well but then they clock off they didn't turn up at all as you mentioned against the dolphins so, you know, you sort of, at the moment, the form that they've taken into this one, uh, I've got a couple of question marks on them, which, you know, so I'm, I'm leaning, I'm leaning towards Knights. They're going into this with, you know, a great win on the weekend, full of confidence. KP played well. Um, yeah, they, they've got, they've got, they've got, put it this way, they've got less to lose out of yeah. this result. Yeah, just go out there and play, boys, you know, what... Everyone expects us to wear an underdog. I, yeah. What I love about the Knights at the moment is, again, similar to the Raiders, if you read the headlines, you would think this is a disaster season for the, the Knights. They're currently sitting one win outside yeah. the eight. Exactly. What yeah. an opportunity. And also, yeah. I say this on my podcast as well. If, Ad, if if they'd be sitting 11th right now without any dramas, no injuries, no dramas whatsoever, I think most people go, yeah, decent, satisfactory. Yep. They're sitting 11th with a 1,000 dramas, key players out, you know, getting players in late in regards to, you know, your fullback. I love what the Knights have done so far this year. I really do. Mm. Yeah, um, very good. Now, let's head to the next game. Uh, we've got the Tigers v. the Cowboys. Hasn't the Tigers, although they lost 20-0, I thought they played really well last week. Yeah. I, I, I was really impressed. What do you reckon? Yeah, gutsy, mate. They were gutsy. Um, they were just they were beaten by a better footy side. That's all it was. They, they had a bit more class, the, the Rabbits. Um, but I'm, I'm loving the, the effort that they're putting into their footy. And just those couple of wins that they had, those back-to-back wins, it, it's changed the feeling within the group. You can see it with the way they play yeah. their footy. Mm. You can see it. Um, I think Brooks, he's got, a, he's got a milestone game as well, I think, um, playing this weekend. Um, so 200. Yeah, he's 200th. So well done to Brooksy, 200 games. There's only, you know, there's, there's not too many people that have achieved that across, you know, many, many years of rugby league. So well done to him to getting to that milestone. Um, and what, can the boys live for him? For Brooksy? Yeah. Um, he, he's looked so much more confident over the last couple of weeks. Far out. It's yeah. honestly like a different person. Yeah. So, the, and, and I think this is a game where they, they, they turn up and go, well, yeah, we're going to back ourselves against the Cowboys. Mm. They look at the Cowboys and go, well, they, you know, they've they've had a couple of good wins of late, but you know, they've been up and down as well. So, we just need to put early pressure on them. Yeah, I, I'm I'm going to go the Cowboys. I really like just the energy change and the the fact that you can see it. You yeah. can actually genuinely measure a different in, uh, feel in the side, mm-hmm. uh, and I think that this is a really important game for them. If they can get a win, all of a sudden they get in touch with that top eight all of a sudden they could roll into another win and before you know it they're in touch with that six to eight kind of yes. bracket of teams and their whole season has gone from oh my god disaster to <laughs> you know we're, yeah. we're fighting here we're a fighting yeah. chance yep yeah I'm, I'm 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 going cowboys too i think the cowboys will get the job done welcome back to the captain's run with cameron smith now dolphins v storm saturday bellyache v bennett <laughs> bromwich brinko lee return tafade uh and Fama Fasuali uh, drop out. Mm-hmm. Ray Stone returns from a head knock. Storm no changes. How do you see this one, Smithy? I tell you what, this this is um, this is close to the best game of the round, just behind Panthers Broncos because the Dolphins um, they've been going great guns all year. They've they've exceeded a lot of people's expectations already um, with with what they've achieved. Um, with the wind so far, and the storm, well, there's still, still some question marks over, you know, where they're actually placed in this competition. Whether they're, you know, premiership contenders, you know, whether they'll finish top four. Um, certainly, I believe they'll be, they'll be top eight. They'll be playing finals footy come the end of the year. But again, go back to last week, mate. It was, it was really hard to get a gauge off last week's result, given they played 
um, 20 minutes of, of the main part, the bulk part of that game, the most important periods against 12 men. Um, you know, with Herbie Farmworth being sent to the sin bin and then Patrick Carrigan for that G up of a call on a hip drop. Um, so, and, and they were able to score points in both periods um, when those players were off. So um, really hard to get a gauge on, on where they're at, considering the Broncos actually stuck with them um, for the most part of that game. So the one thing I will say is that if they come up to Brisbane and with any sort of complacency or underestimate the Dolphins, they'll, they'll get a result like the Sharks got a couple of weeks ago mm. against the Dolphins. I can tell you that much. They'll be, they'll be well prepared. Wayne Bennett will have this team up and about to play against Melbourne. They they really enjoy you. Know, and you made a little bit of a joke about um, Bellyache versus Wayne Bennett. Well, these two guys, they really enjoy coming up against each other. It's a bit, it's a bit more than just a footy game, although they won't admit that. I think they really they like the challenge as far as whose team is best prepared for the game. Um, you know who can who can try and outcoach the other um, and get the result. I think I think Craig's got a wonderful win percentage against Wayne Bennett, but it's a new year, it's a new team that that Wayne Bennett um, is in charge of, and I think this will be a, a really close match. I think the t- I think the Storm um, by a couple. But they need to be at their very best to do that. If they're slightly off, if they're slightly off, the Dolphins will beat them. It's uh, incredible how the Dolphins have almost made you us scared to tip against them because they just continue <laughs> to surprise. I struggle. Uh, I struggle mate, to not tip them these days. Mate, it's amazing. Another just quick factor before we move to the next game. Kofusi, Jesse, Kenny Bromwich. Oh, yeah. All against their old club. Yes. I think they'll be looking for a, uh, a big game. Now, yeah, I reckon. I reckon a few sneaky text messages too. Whoopsie. Maybe, maybe Whoopsie. Felice Kofusi to Cameron Munster just to okay. say, watch your ribs, brother. Might want to pad them before game <laughs> rather than after the game, mate. Uh, doggies versus Titans, mate. How do you see this one playing out? Um, well, Josh Adokar, the Fox. Oh, the Fox. He's back. How good! Big in. There was there was word and there's a bit of chat that he might have been back last week, but he said no, no, I'm not ready, fellas. I'm I'm uh, I'm going to give it another week's rest, but still a quick return. Five weeks, five wow. weeks was it from syndesmosis yeah. surgery? So that's that's a good return. Um, that'll that'll give the Bulldogs team plenty of energy. We know his you know his energy is infectious across the group. Um, but they take on Titans, and we spoke to Brimo before about how you know the boys are up and about. They're feeling good about their footy at the moment. Um, taking them on in Sydney, yeah, no, I, I like the Titans' chances. I do like their chances down there, particularly with you know Fafida playing the way he is at the moment with the confidence. It's you know we haven't seen these type of performances from David Fafida for quite some time. Um, yeah, I'm going Titans. Going Titans. Yeah, it's, I think. Uh, Titans. Oh, man, this is a really... Carl Oluwapu, he starts at 5'8 as well, which is going to be really interesting. The rookie finally getting his first start in the NRL. Um, look, I'm going to get Bulldogs. I reckon they bounce back. Yep. Uh, but it's, like, it's going to be a cracking game because both teams can attack from anywhere on the field. So I actually think it's going to be a really exciting game to watch. Raiders v. the Seagulls. How do you see this one playing out, Smithy? Man, I, I, Seagulls are struggling right now. Oh. They're just... They're struggling. They're really struggling. Um... Jakey Trebojevic, he's back. Uh, although thinking that he was going to be out for a month, he's only been out for, what, a couple? So he's back, which is which is good news for Manly. I think they've they've missed his leadership through the middle of the field. And, and the work he does defensively is just, you know, it's I think at times it's a little bit underestimated. Josh Alloyer, of course, he's out. So, you know, one of their aggressors, one of their standover men, uh, um, it, they might miss him, particularly when they have to go down to Canberra. Raiders love playing at home. They're, they're, they're a completely different team when they play at home in front of their home fans. I think I think the Raiders, they go they go six straight. Yeah. I'm, I'm back in Raiders, you, mate. mate. I'm back in Raiders in as well. I, I The Manly Seagulls, to see how far they are from the team that opened the season with obviously winning the preseason comp. Yeah. And look, you, you don't take too much out of the preseason, but at the same time, it still is... It's still not easy to get the win in the preseason games. No. Open this open this the the season, they get two wins and they're everyone's dark horse. Everyone's going, Wow, this team really can do something. The, you know, the, the confusing thing, Kempy, is not that long ago, they absolutely bashed Melbourne Storm. Mm. 
They were so brutal. I was there at the game, watched it live, and they they put, you know, when Juzzy Olam took that run, like he he was hit like he'd never been hit before. Mm. And so if they can do that to the Melbourne Storm, why can't they replicate that every week? Yeah, That's the hard thing to understand about the Manly Seagulls. So um, they haven't been the same since that game. So I'm tipping Raiders. Yeah, I'm tipping Raiders too. We're going to head to a break. After the break, we share our sure things. It- Holy schnitz. Time now for the sporting highlight of the week. Thanks to schnitz. Home of fresh, golden, handcrafted schnitzels. Welcome back to the Captain's Run. Time now for Holy Schnitz. Smithy, what was your Holy Schnitz moment of the week? Holy Schnitz moment of the week, Kempi. I'm going to a different sport. I'm going to soccer, or for those that like to call it football, uh, in England. My side is Arsenal. They were beaten 3-0, wow. Kempi. 3-0 by Brighton. Oh, no. And I just went, holy schnitz, there goes the league. Oh. They've, been, they've been sitting on top of the league for pretty much the whole season, and now they've just gone here, City, Man City, take it off us. Oh, my God. Wow. What, well, when when did whole, you say it? I said it when Dave Fafida ran the length of the field. Oh. I was yelling, holy schnitz, the whole time, the whole time. Uh, now, let's now share a sure thing for Sure Hire, the temporary work expert, surehire.com.au. Who's your sure thing, Smithy? I'm going the green machine against Manly. Six Mine in a row. Is- Mate, mine's the Roosters. I don't think there's any way. Oh, they, oh, oh, oh. There's no Tommy. way they don't get up. There's no way they don't get up after that win, uh, that loss last week. Yep. Uh, sure Hire, Australia's most complete shoring, propping, and traffic product range. Call 1300 Sure Hire. Uh, we will see you all next week. See you later, guys.